We are live. Oh no! Wants to hear somebody <laughs> never. I did it. No, I did it right. I'm. I'm sorry, guys. I'm so tired. <laughs> well, welcome back. We had a nice uh, hour and a half break, and we are back to play some misspent youth, which I am very excited about. Uh, I'm gonna let you guys kind of do introductions and run things while I get this up on the Kickstarter page. Hello, okay. I'm Rem. Oh no, I haven't changed the names. We're oh, with Rem, God. Rem, Chris, and Sarah. I'm Sarah, and that is what I've always wanted to be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm big boss now. <laughs> I'm the worst. <laughs> hey, it's uh, it's a great great start actually. Oh. Erica, are you on are you on Twitter? This is uh, this is our not offering. Not super on Twitter actually. Not super <laughs> not really. on Twitter. I don't really use it. <laughs> Shay, are you on Twitter? I am on Twitter. I'm tagging people in the thing to watch us. So if you want to be tagged, then then I will tag you. you if you don't, then you just say special don't guest be tagged. nonsense personified and and, and others <laughs> et, et cetera. The the Kickstarter is now named Ava. Um. <laughs> the uh. Yeah, the uh, and Sarah, don't worry. These uh, fairly trivial uh, technical uh, issues in the beginning are essentially our, our offerings to appease the gods of internet chaos and, and the great gremlins. Yeah, so, but but when we started, they will be well fed. When we did episodicals one, Kender Mage would always say, "Come for the chaos, uh, stay for the fun," and yeah. he doesn't do that anymore. And I feel like I, I'm giving he him still reason does to that. go back to that. He does still he does really? that. Yeah. He doesn't to me anymore. Well, he apparently he hates you. I don't know what to say. <laughs> that must be it. <laughs> well, it's, good. it's the only option, right? It's the only thing left. Uh, keep talking. Oh, right, okay. So. Blah, so, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I shouldn't be talking. Well, I'm I'm typing. Oh. And I'm Opti. So hi folks, good to good to type at you. I'm Cliff, uh, also known as Mr. Johnson of the Arcology Podcast, but also my uh, game developer writer name is Clifton Lambert. Um, you can call me Cliff; that's fine. Uh, here is the authority for this uh, the sort of a campaign of misspent youth that we'll be playing this series throughout the Kickstarter campaign which I've been very much looking forward to for lots of reasons. One, because I love this game, and two, because, oh my gosh, look at this cast of people that I get to play it with. Uh, we've got uh, Derica, who I haven't gamed with much, but uh, it was definitely memorable, and uh, we got to meet and hang out at Gen Con. <laughs> I will pass the mic to you. Derica, colon, definitely <laughs> memorable. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I now have to like think of my life and my choices. Um, I'm Jerrica, uh, your neighborhood Hufflepuff, and I um, am really excited to be here. I am uh, completely new to misspent youth, so um, if you're like worried about how to jump in, I am um, volunteering as tribute um, to step in pretty blind to this and just have a good time. So. So yeah. many pop culture references in one sentence. I know. I I think I might have a problem. <laughs> uh, hey, you should meet my friend Shay. Hi, Shay. Hi, my name is Shay. Um, intros. I do create. I create games. I do a lot of the TikTok, and I am happy to play with Sarah, and and good old good old Derica because you know. Episodicals. It's been a while. Two. It was great. The fam and then is we're back playing. together. The fam is back together. I can't play Tiffany. It's really sad. We tried to commission it, but it didn't work. I uh, but <laughs> see, there we go. And I get to play with Opti and Cliff, so it's gonna be fun. You know, it will well. be. The last time we played together, it was like uh, that one game that's that everybody's sus. Oh, Among Us? <laughs> Among Us. 
one game where everybody sus. I was like, I just thought of five games. It's, it's <laughs> the one that one that created sus. Right? I was like, werewolf. <laughs> Excellent. My face hurts already. But that's me. Let's pass off. Look at that roll to Opti. Opti hey. just started talking. Friends, uh, I'm Opti. I'm uh, the host of the Neo Anarchist podcast. And uh, we made uh, Cliff, what's the other one we made together? The uh, Shadowrun Origins podcast. And I uh, wrote a bunch of Shadowrun stuff. And then we started. Dragon Unicorns games and launched with a game called Gangs of the Undercity and made good friends with Robert Bowl, who got out of the business and we inherited Misspent Youth from him and now we're relaunching Misspent Youth, Fall in Love, Not in Line, and and we're gosh darn excited about it. To be here with you playing that game. Did it's I don't think you're I don't think you're ready for it. I don't think you can handle this. Um, <laughs> I'm Sarah. <laughs> uh, or, or I guess, so I'm trying to go by Rem by now and I'm doing terrible at it. Um, but uh, welcome back to the Twitch channel. Welcome uh, viewers. We're already up to 17, 18 viewers again. Uh, so people Woo! are excited to watch this uh, playthrough. I'm excited to play through with, with these guys. It's going to be a lot of laughs because everything's a lot of laughs when you have this group together. Um, so, yeah. Uh, the other thing, too, I just want to let you know, um, I'm going to try not to d interrupt the, the flow, but like if, if big things happen on the Kickstarter, I want to thank people and shout out where we're at and stuff like that. So I might pop in with... <gasps> Five thousand dollars, or whatever. Like that. So, yeah. um, maybe, maybe at a baseline, we should sh shout out essentially where we're at now, so yeah. we can have something to compare to as we grow. We are anchor. at sixty-two backers, four thousand four hundred fifty-four dollars. Yeah, and that's in nice. our first five hours, almost six. On a Tuesday <laughs> morning. Yeah, that that's nice. I think that's uh, this is before a lot of our potential backers in Pacific time uh, wake up. Are even going to be rolling <laughs> out bed? Yeah. So. Yeah. It's, yes, if it was Opti, uh, under normal circumstances, I'd be getting out of bed right now and going, "Hmm, what Kickstarters will I back today?" <laughs> <laughs> oh, this one looks keen. Uh, you can check out the Kickstarter if you haven't already. We are at remalternus.com slash misspent youth. Uh, and with that, I think uh, let's let's dive in, Cliff. What, how do you want to do this? Okay, we're going to do this uh, more or less essentially as it would be presented in a chapter of the new misspent youth book uh, using one of the settings that will be featured in the book. This is the cyberpunk fantasy setting of Neo Babylon. And uh, this uh, misspent youth book is designed to invite new, new players or uh, players who are used to all kinds of different games, but people are new to misspent youth uh, to really be able to easily get into it and understand and get the hang of the game without having to do a bunch of world creation ahead of time. So characters are pre-generated. The first episode is... Uh, largely scripted well it's more scripted than the beginning and the the scaffolding falls away as you get toward the end of it and i'm looking forward to as we play through the kickstarter campaign actually then going through further episodes that we sort of have to make up together uh with the less guidance uh but with uh, some of you being totally new to this game uh i want to see how you get used to that and uh, how easy it is to to plunge into to uh learning the game and just having fun with it and making up new stories with it. So with that, uh, we're going to get started with the document. And instead of having uh, me just as the GM slash authority, uh, whatever, uh, read, do all the reading, I'm going to have us um, sort of uh, take turns reading through sections as if we've sort of just gotten together to play this game and we've opened it up to the chapter we're going to use and uh, we're going to pass the book around. So uh, before we do that, do all of you have the documents in front of you? Yes. Yeah. 
All right, we'll start with Opti. Uh, will you read, start by reading the uh, section that's titled, What is this game? What is this game? Misspent Youth is a tabletop role-playing game, but it's not just a game. Sure, it's a lot of fun, but it's also an act of subversion. Using your imagination to create a world where you can define, stand up to, and overcome authority is empowering. That's what this game is all about. When authority tries to stamp you out, you get to stand up to it and make it afraid of losing its power over you. In real life, this almost always results in pushback. Sometimes this pushback is social or cultural pressure that attempts to protect its injustices by identifying any criticism or resistance as uncivil or violating some all-important code of nice behavior. Sometimes people are physically harmed or killed for standing up. We've all seen plenty examples of this, but I'm sure there are a few in particular that come to your mind. You want to keep going? Yep. Okay. This is a safe place where you get to stand up and fight back. There will be consequences, but the consequences happen within the story. No one gets hurt for real. This game creates a safe space to imagine how you might stand up to authority and undermine unjust systems of power. This will always be relevant to humanity, but it certainly seems especially important right now. The rise of nationalism, misinformation, and anti-democratic fascist movements is troubling, as are the overreaches of capitalism, the unchecked power of the extremely wealthy, the maligning influence of social media platforms, and ongoing harm due to systemic issues of social and cultural injustice. Add to that the complex... Uh, ethics of technological advancements, diseases, and disasters that are results of humanity's reckless abandon, and we find that we all have the inspiration we could have ever needed for the authority and dystopias of our misspent youth games. In this safe space, in this game, we don't just stand up against injustice and authority, we subvert and destroy it. We destroy it in our imagination by creating a shared story experience together, along with some dice and some rules that only exist to serve as a guide to prompt our creativity. We can continue to imagine how we can create justice in the world around us. I should say, don't try this at home. But what I really want to say is this. Imagination is the first step in changing the world. Whenever you witness an injustice, I hope you'll be ready to subvert or destroy it. Keep going. Uh, let's see. Let's uh, pass the baton to uh, Derica. You're going to read the making stuff up section. Oh, my specialty. Okay. Making stuff up. Our approach to the episode presented in this document is to provide you with a lot of ideas to start from. If you haven't played a lot of narrative role playing games, it can be hard to figure out what you're supposed to do. But most people find that it comes easily and is a lot of fun once you get into it. And so. Unlike much, the much more open-ended presentation of most narrative games, we've provided with you some structure to help you get started in the form of a setting that is already made up for you, characters that will help you bring the setting to life, an authority you're going to want to take down, and a written plot to get you going. If you'd rather make more stuff up on your own, please feel encouraged and empowered to take the story where your creativity leads instead of adhering to what I wrote. I didn't write anything just as a... Oh, yes, sir. That said, uh, <laughs> we left a lot of blank space for you to fill in with your own ideas, and the outcome of the story is not predetermined. Every group is going to have a very different experience depending on the choices that you make. When something comes up that you don't know about the world, like whether or not you have smartphones, what class you're taking, a favorite snack, or anything that you don't know to understand the world and tell the story, make it up. As long as it doesn't override or contradict with something that's already been established by your fellow players, Use it. All right. Uh, Shay, do you want to read the setting introduction? Got you. <clears throat> Neon ba Neo Babylon. The vast city sprawls of ne Stop laughing. The vast city sprawls of Neon Babylon st stands alone in this world's largest, wealthiest, and most influential city there has ever been. Ruled by a council of mages and the corporation that serves them, those on the margins are constantly feuding for themselves, while rich, powerful forces in Neo Babylon grind towards uniformity and suck wealth from the lower classes. Rebels, punks, and subversive refuse to go qui go quietly, armed with cybernetic magic, faith, skills, and most importantly, 
your community. You're going to kick the Neon Babylon's darkness until you break the system or are broken by it. Your neighborhoods is a rough part of town in Neon Babylon, one that is struggling uh, economically for many years. But a recent corporate initiative is pouring resources into the community, bringing a bright future. Brought to you by King U Corp. All right. Uh, since I'm playing the authority, I'll read this part. The authority. The authority plays the role of the antagonist, putting pressure on the youthful offenders and generally being really mean. This isn't a game of punching up at cardboard cutouts and simplistic caricatures of villainy. But just to be explicitly clear, I'm not giving you or me permission to cross the line of consent with your friends here. Stay within the boundaries you all set and take care of and respect each other when unexpected boundaries are discovered. The most important role of the authority is to bring out as much interesting story and character development as possible. And the primary tool is turning the screws on the youthful offenders. The name of the authority is Kingu Corp. Kingu Corp is a worldwide corporation that makes everything from military hardware to consumer goods and is also known for its popular social media platform, Metabook. Kingu Corp has recently established itself within your neighborhood and has replaced the local government and envoys with its own people. In addition to building new factories and hiring many local people as employees, they bought out and replaced all local small businesses. Now, everyone with a job works for Kingu Corp. They even tore down and replaced the old high school with a shiny new building. Most people in town seem optimistic. Steady employment, nice phones, and employee discounts are the siren songs that prevent them from seeing how Kingu Corp is drowning them all. Never mind the people who don't do well under Kingu Corp's authority. Try not to think about that. <clears throat> There's nothing anyone can do about it anyway, is there? Don't let the Kingu Corp envoys hear your criticism, or you might be the next person to get demonetized. Now, Kingu Corp has a vice, a victim, a visage, and a need. The vice is greed. Kingu Corp is driven by an insatiable hunger that it can't deny. Money, power, even influence over the daily lives and politics of its employees. Kingu Corp's victim is people. Kingu Corp uses people up, crushes their dreams, and appropriates all of their potential to feed its profit margins with no care at all for those who pay the true costs. Kingu Corp's visage is corporate. Kingu Corp is a big business, a massive corporation with incredible economic power, which it leverages into considerable political power. No value is considered higher or more important than that which generates profit for its shareholders and high-level executives. And need. Kingu Corp requires an endless source of inexpensive, indebted, indoctrinated, and compliant labor. Moving on to systems of control that Kingu Corp uses. Kingu Corp has four systems of control, and um, I think I'm going to pass the mic to Sarah to read through all four of them, please. You got it. Metabook. Kingu Corp owns Metabook, the most popular social media platform that everybody uses. This allows Kingu Corp to directly influence public opinion, draw attention toward or away from events according to their preferences, deliver targeted misinformation, and ultimately shape the beliefs of the people who log on. They never truly ever log off once they sign on. People who criticize the platform are stigmatized as old fashioned and irrelevant. Second system of control is demonetization. As a deterrent and punishment, Kingu Corp de demonetizes people by excluding them from access to employment. They've established a near monopoly and control of local government agencies. If you aren't working for Kingu Corp, you have no way of making a living. Third system of control is the new high school. Kingu Corp tore down the old decrepit high school building and have replaced it with a new shiny campus with state of the art facilities. Most adults in the area seem thrilled with the new structure and Kingu Corp is thrilled to have a majority stake in the mandatory education of every young mind. And the final system of control, community consequences for individual actions. When you get in trouble with Kingu Corp, you can be demonetized, but it doesn't stop there. Kingu Corp wants friends and family members to be highly motivated to pressure each other to adhere to corporate culture. 
When one person is punished, other secondary punishments are issued to everyone connected to that person. These punishments are harshest to the, those closest to the offender. Immediate family members might be docked pay, demoted, or even demonetized as a consequence for another person's behavior. If you're metabook friends, you lose meta points. You can imagine that most people quickly unfriend anyone that offends Kingu Corp. Thank you, Sarah. I'll take That's evil. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're not done yet. Now it's time to tell you about the authority figures that uh, these are people that uh, essentially wield power on behalf of Kingu Corp's interests. So I'll start by saying I haven't named any of the authority figures, and I leave that to you, youthful offenders. Whenever you meet an authority figure for the first time, the youthful offenders, which I might call YOs from now, or you might even call them YOs, I guess. It's an easy abbreviation. Yo. So let's we'll see how that sounds. We'll audition this. Whenever you meet an authority figure for the first time, the YOs get to make up their name. Hmm, not sure if I like it. Anyway, I found that it's very satisfying to name authority figures after people who are responsible for injustice in the real world, so I can see them brought down in fiction. But you can use whatever sources of inspiration you wish. The point of having the YOs name the authority figures is that it makes them a bit more personal. Yeah, I'm going to go with YOs. Uh, so, the uh, authority figures are the high school principal. The new principal is a Kingu Corp appointee, and their primary job is to make sure that the corporate indoctrination process runs smoothly and efficiently. There is the rich, youthful offender's parents. One or more of a YO's parents got a job with Kingu Corp and have quickly risen in its hierarchy. They were recently promoted to an important and well-played position as a demonetizer. Every life they destroyed is rewarded with a valuable commission, and since then you've moved into a nicer place, your parents gave you a new car, and you have the highest and most expensive phone Kingu Corp makes. The third authority figure is a lawjack captain. Officially, the lawjacks are public servants. In reality, they only exist to serve the wealthy and powerful. They enforce the laws that preserve profits at the expense of the people they are sworn to protect and serve. The lawjack captain isn't on King Corp's payroll, but that doesn't mean he doesn't work for them. He knows that any excesses of force will be overlooked as long as the victims are not valued by King Corp. And then there is the community elder collaborator. They used to own a number of small businesses in the neighborhood, but sold them all for stakes in Kingu Corp. They are the only community elder that wasn't replaced by Kingu Corp representatives. They're completely loyal to the company, are willing to assist Kingu Corp with any endeavor, regardless of its cost to the people they used to be responsible for. Now they only seem to care about Kingu Corp and their own ever-increasing personal wealth. So that, my friends, is the authority. What do you think? Boo. Take him down. Hit. Yeah, I, I, yeah, we gotta take him down. Sir, I do not like it. I want to give all them wedgies. <laughs> all right. Yeah, I That's second how that emotion. We stick it to the man. We stick it well, in their bums. <laughs> exactly. No, no. How did immediately, Sarah? You just. Did you miss me, Derricka? So. So I think so far it's all been bad news going through the authority, but uh, there is something called an exploit. Uh, now it says here that the authority chooses one of the exploits before the first episode. I am actually going to um, leave that decision up to the people who are hanging out in the chat here uh, cool. with an informal uh, poll by speaking out in the chat. So there's uh, several ex exploits. Only one of them will actually be available. Uh, and it, Let's read through them, and the audience gets to choose which one we uh, we end up with. So uh, let's see. For reading these, uh, Derica, do you want to read about the Anti Corp Gang? Yeah, yeah. The Anti Corp Gang. For Kingu Corp brought. Wow, we're gonna start over again. Anti Corp Gang. Before Kingu Corp bought the neighborhood, there were very uh, there were a few small gangs. These gangs were generally considered a public nuisance. There was a brutal crackdown, but the ones who survived formed a new gang and only recruit people who don't work for King Goo Corp or have been demonetized by them. In addition to the illicit goods you'd expect them to sell, they've managed to establish a secondary market for basic staples as well, food, medicine, even toilet paper. 
They don't accept money for these things, but only trade in barter and favors. Instead of using this as an opportunity to profiteer, the gang has made it into a community resource. If you're doing pretty well for yourself, you can expect to pay high prices, but very little is asked of the destitute. The gang has earned something of a folk hero status, and they're no friends of Kingu Court. But they're also dangerous to anyone they see as a threat. If you thought uh, demonetization was scary, you don't want to see what happens to the people who betray the gang. All right, Shay, do you want to tell us about the Breacher Collective? The Breacher Collective. Tech is designed to work for the corporations, but can also be hacked or breached, as we call it around here. Your neighbors has a underground, your neighborhood has an underground community of breachers who share secrets, software, and even hardware with each other as they all seek to get a better at hacking the world. It's easy to get into breaching if you know who to ask and you know who to ask. And you know who to ask. Ah, yeah. Ha, thank you. I, I was I, you yeah. say, I was like, wait a minute. to get into breaching if you know who to ask. <laughs> And you know who to ask. There you go. <laughs> yeah. I got you, Shay. All right. Uh, Sarah, do you want to read about the Lawjack Traders option? Always. This is the third and final of the three <laughs> options, and then we'll take a poll in the in the uh, chat. Yeah. Here you go, guys. Um, all right. Lawjack Traders. Lawjacks are a corrupt organization subverted from their duty to protect and serve the people by even more corrupt authorities. They perpetuate injustices on behalf of the wealthy and powerful. But some people are drawn by the ideals that lawjacks are meant to live up to. When most of them become lawjacks, they end up as corrupt as the rest of them. But some few are trying to make it work, to do their best and restore the honor that police never earned. They're still complicit, but they're also trying to make things better. In constant fear of their superiors and co-workers, they are also determined to find a way to work against them. But even the slightest signs of being a traitor to the Lawjacks is often a death sentence. Bad things can happen to a cop on the job, especially if the captain decides to make it so. All right, so three options. Anti-Carp Gang, Breacher Collective, or Lawjack Traitors. One of these will be an exploit that will become available for the youthful offenders to make use of when fighting the authority. What's it going to be, chat? As, as we do that, let's move on to the youthful offenders themselves and introduce the characters you've chosen. Did everyone pick a character? Yep. Or did anyone not pick a character? Got one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Let's just read off the characters... Uh, that we're choosing, and uh, we'll skip the ones that, that aren't being chosen, because there's six characters, and then we have four players here. So, uh, we'll go in alphabetical, no, not alphabetical order. We'll go in the order they appear in the document. Uh, mm -hmm. Whoever is playing the thing, go ahead and read off the little blurb about your character, and also feel free to add in uh, maybe some details about uh, your character, like uh, from your sheet, maybe a little bit about the looks, or... Uh, if you want to mention a couple of their convictions, don't have to read off that whole big background thing. I actually prefer that you didn't read that big thing. Um, I think that's a bit bit of a wall of text before getting into the game. But um, anything you want to say that's relevant about your character. Um, I don't think... Not sure who's first. Do we I have Beatty? we have a Beatty. Okay, a Panda? That's me! Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, stand up. <laughs> I almost knocked my whole desk over there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sounds about right. Pedro Panda Munoz uh, is a 14-year-old boy. Uh, he's small for his age. He looks five years younger than he is. Bright eyes, always watching. He acts like he belongs wherever he finds himself. Uh, he has several convictions. His means uh, are is smart. Panda is super smart and knows a lot about all kinds of stuff. Uh, but smart, if I do sell out, sells out to pedantic. Uh, I'll skip that for now unless it becomes relevant. Uh, motive? Yeah, we haven't really gone over what convictions are yet, so. Cool. Uh, motive, thrills, uh, panda's an adrenaline junkie, and nothing gets him high like breaking the rules. Uh, opportunity is sneaky. Panda is really good at hiding and sneaking around and even knows how to pick locks. Uh, his MO is breacher. 
Panda knows his way around security tech and computer systems and can make them do what he wants using an illegal, concealable cyber kit he never leaves home without. And finally, his disorder is boundless curiosity. Panda is great at uncovering secrets and finding out stuff he isn't supposed to know, and it's hard for him to not to follow up on his curiosity when it bites. Yeah, that's great. Uh, I love that intro. So um, let's carry on in that same, relatively same format. Real um, quick, cheers to Don Allman, who pushed us over the $4,500 mark. Thank you. And we are now at 64 backers. Thank Woo! you, thank you. Nice. Woo -woo. So anybody playing Witch? No Witch? Wow. Wow. Every other, every other playtest, Witch has been the first one chosen. So, <laughs> All right. What about uh, Golden Boy? We're different, Jace. okay? <laughs> See, when you talk about Golden Boy. Goodness gracious. You know Golden Boy <laughs> is like, he's a cool kid. He's a valedictorian. You know, he, he's put together. He, you know, he don't talk, but when he talks, it counts. Uh, but he's no, he he he's mindful. He wants to follow the rules. He wants justice. That's what he wants. Overall, he wants justice. His he he uh, seeks to you know, help people. The people like him, and you know, Golden Boy likes them. Uh, he is trusted by Law Jax because he do want to do good. Because he thinks Law Jax and his mind are trying to do some type of good. Uh, the best part which is the part of why Golden Boy is a Golden Boy, is he's basically, he he ha, he is an elemental martial artist. So he can do wind, he can do water, earth, and 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 all the elements. And I almost said something that everybody <laughs> would be with. Oh, but know I didn't go, yeah, we, <laughs> but go yeah. planet. <laughs> mm -hmm. Art. Yep, it, it was yeah. it was it was that one. Everything changed. <laughs> and everything changed when somebody came. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah, that's who basically Golden Boy is. He is a upstanding in the community. Uh but he Aren't can you... go boom boom bam bam <laughs> with his bits of stuff. Why don't you go ahead and read through uh Jace's convictions, uh but not the sold out versions. Just okay. a little blurb about each of them. So, Cool. He looks and acts cool, and people seem to like being around him. Um, altruism, which has, he has an overriding need to assist anybody who needs him. He likes to help people. Trusted. His dad is a law jack, and the authority seems to believe that he's a good little rule follower who will follow in his father's footsteps. Uh... Uh, he got Yonian training. Jace has access to special martial arts training, who has unlocked a mysterious connection to the elements, air, fire, earth, and water. Through special movements, uh, he can control the elements in creative ways. Uh, he's uh, righteous. Uh, he has a strong sense of what's right and wrong and goes beyond just what uh, has been told by the authority. Truth and truth justice are clear to him, and so is injustice when he witnesses it. So, yes. Nice. I think that'll be a fun character. We need to see how you play him. Already loving it. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, do we have uh, I was Char? I wondering why you had the yeah, show. Yeah, we have, we have Char. Let's see. <laughs> I'm channeling my Char. Cute. Okay. Uh, Char Salem is a non-binary 15-year-old. Uh, they have a hooded gaze when they're not focused on reading. They prefer flowy clothing in shades of gray and carry a messenger bag covered in arcane patches. Uh, they are smart and proud. Uh, they are rich and have a background in arcane studies. Um, unfortunately, Chark can tend to be overconfident. They can't imagine that what they try will fail, and they're usually right due to their competence as well as confidence, but when they're wrong, they fall hard. Um, I was born into old money for the first 10 years of my life. I never wanted for anything. I received the best education money could buy. 
And given as how I was exceedingly intelligent and curious, uh, I dove in with gusto. Ultimately, oh, I learned how to do magic. That's the big long part I didn't want yeah. you to read. So. Magic! <laughs> but, uh, if you want to skip ahead to uh, each one of you has uh, like a special ability or something called an MO. At the end of the uh, the character uh, section, there's something called what can you do with whatever it is. In this case, arcane magic. So why don't you just uh, skip ahead and read that part uh, for us? What can I do with arcane magic? I know a bunch of useful spells like invisibility, disguise, levitation, and telekinesis, even magic missiles. This <laughs> takes some preparation and concentration. All right, uh, Derica, are you playing uh, then so uh, <laughs> Truce or? I am playing Truce, okay. yes, yes. Uh, a Trudy Truce Warren um, is a. Uh, female 17 year old she's got thick rimmed cat eye glasses bright colorful clothes a razor sharp bob and razor sharp seams um truce is tough she's been knocked around before and it doesn't bother her much um she has outrage truce is a strong sense of right and wrong and when something's wrong she's filled with passion to make it right truce is pretty Truce always looks great due to her natural good looks and her fashion sense. Um, and Truce has amazing medical skills. Um, one of the things that, that came from her childhood is a vast knowledge of medical skills and pharmaceuticals, largely in response to my parents' chem chemical interests, uh, to be read, drug use. Um, and I have handled more <laughs> medical emergencies than most med student graduates have. Um, and... Uh, yeah, uh, Truce also leads with her fists. Uh, listen, you could talk about problems, or you could punch out the solutions. And Truce likes to punch out solutions. So, um, uh, and yeah, with my medical skills, I can save someone from dying. I can help people recover more quickly. I can identify someone's weaknesses, prepare drugs or toxins and their antidotes. So I can I can do quite a bit with that. Um, also, I, I, I think... Um, that uh, Truce is pretty friendly with uh, with Char, so um, yeah. Cool. Uh, something worth mentioning about Truce and the big wall of text background is that you had uh, your parents were junkies, and they were eventually busted uh, on one of your birthdays, and you've been living with the foster home ever since. Yeah, I mean, foster home is actually a lot better than my house, so yeah. Cool. Uh, so that introduces the characters. Let's take a look and see. I want to say, uh, just from an eyeball, it looks like uh, the Breacher Collective went yep. out as the exploit of choice by the uh, uh, by the audience. Yes, sir. It was one vote for the Lawjack Traders, and everything else went Breacher Collective. And someone Ooh. threw a bribe behind that one, too, so we'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate the bits, uh... And of course, uh, take a moment just to mention here and uh, self-promote that we are uh, promoting a Kickstarter campaign for the new Misspent Youth book. We're playing one of the campaign settings that will be in the book, and it's at Kickstarter. Please go back it. Uh, there's lots of cool uh, options for, uh, for tiers, including getting all three of the Misspent Youth books, including the two previous ones in print sent to your door. Uh, or if you just want the, the hard... The hard copy of uh, this one, that's fine, too. There's there's lots of different options for you to choose from, including ones that let you get to play games with uh, someone who's involved in writing the project, such as myself, Opti, Sarah, and uh, someone else who is not currently present, but is definitely uh, here in our hearts, Ava. So uh, I think there's spots left in each of those games. So I want to say Opti's has been selling out fast. Selling out. Opti is a sellout. That's why. Yeah, uh, that makes right. sense. So with that, <laughs> we'll let, let's move down uh, back to the main playtest document and continue with. Uh, let's see, let's just talk about read over the section about convictions. Uh, we listed off the convictions, but we haven't talked about what they are. And there's a section of the document right here that explains it. So, um, Opti, do you want to read to us about convictions? I'd love to. Convictions are the parts of the Wyos that empower them to fight back against injustice. Each Wyo has a conviction 
that represents their means, motive, opportunity, and specialty to fight the authority with. And then there's the disorder, a fatal flaw that might help you, but drags you down as well. When we start out, all of the convictions are in their innocent, untarnished form. But going up against the authority often requires sacrifices, and you're likely to sell out some of these along the way. Once you sell out a conviction, it becomes a twisted, corrupt version of what it once was. And you take one more step towards being just as bad as what you're trying to oppose. You can still use it to fight the authority, but it has a drawback. Whenever you stand up using a sold-out conviction, the authority will get to claim one extra space on their next turn. Also, you can only ever sell out a conviction once, and it's permanent. If any YO sells out their last pure conviction, it's game over. Maybe someone will save the world one day, but it's not going to be you. Oof, that hurts. I don't want to hear that in my role-playing games. That's exactly my thought. I'm the, <laughs> I'm the hero painful. of this story. <laughs> In a one-shot game like the playtests, uh, we're not likely to experience the consequences of selling out too fast. Just keep this in mind. If your cell ends up selling out more than one conviction per episode, you're on a slippery slope. If you win the episode with only one sellout, that's a solid win. If you win with two or more sellouts, that's very costly. That said, losing an episode is the worst. All right, next, uh, the rich kid. Decide which YO among the ones you've chosen is the rich kid who lives in a fancy house, has lots of nice things, and their parents are authority figures who work for King Corp as demonetizers. This might seem Actually, obvious based on the Char, YOs right? we selected. I mean, Char comes from old money. Yeah. They could be the rich kid, or the foster parents could be rich. You know, any true. anyone that fits the group. Uh, I mean, any any of you could have the the shitty demonetizing parents. <laughs> That buy you nice things and stock the house with all the snacks you want. Uh, I mean, yeah, Char or Golden Boy, I think meet, make the most sense there. I don't care which one. I think Char, like, just... Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Jay. I was just going to say Char makes sense to me. Yeah, I say Char. Golden Boy, dad's a cop. Cop don't make that much money. Uh, But it's a corporate... No, Char. Yes, Char. Yes, you. Okay. <laughs> then it... Yeah. I'm the rich kid. Sounds good. Is Sarah there, or did she have to leave? Are you listening? Um, Sarah's taking a quick nap, probably. Hour nap. Oh, okay. Just a, I don't know. Between blinks, you know? <laughs> yeah, she knows this stuff already. Or maybe um, is feeding her dog. So, uh, moving on to friendship questions, and uh, just this just explains what they are. I'll, I'll read through this, and Sarah knows this stuff already, too, so. Uh, every YO includes a list of friendship questions. These questions put another YO's player on the spot in order to help you figure out something important about their past or their relationship with your YO. Before the authority sets the stage for each new scene, uh, which is actually only for a few scenes, usually the YO set the stage. I need to edit that. Uh, Playtest document. Uh, one player must ask and receive an answer to one of their friendship questions. Everyone should try to bring up the themes or ideas that are raised by the question or answers within the scene, but it's not required. Only the asking and answering is critical. When you ask a friendship question, you get to choose who to direct the question towards. The answer must come from that YO's perspective, but feel free to discuss ideas as a group if the answering player asks for help. If they don't ask for help, butt out and let them come up with an answer on their own. If everyone gets stumped, feel free to cross off the question and pick a different one. Friendship questions have two intended purposes. To one, to explore and define aspects of the youthful offender's backgrounds and relationships to one another. This deepens and enriches the story you create together, which is one of the most important reasons to play the game. Two, to get you started thinking about some ideas and themes as you go with each scene, which provides you with a source of inspiration to draw from. Each included YO starts with a list of friendship questions. When everyone is crossed off, either because it was answered or discarded, you must replace it with a new question that you make up. The included friendship questions provide some good examples, so feel free to use a slightly rewritten version of one of them if you like. Otherwise, just make sure that it relates to some defining background experience that is shared with another YO, asks about how another YO feels about your YO, or questions another YO about the reasons behind their recent choices. 
This last one is kind of a wild card that can be reused again and again, so feel free to fall back on it if you get stumped. Another option is uh, just not cross off a friendship question so that you can ask the same question to a different YO later. Uh, this game isn't about overcoming the challenge of coming up with ideas on the spot, so there's absolutely no shame in doing whatever you need to to make it work. The most important thing is that you have a bunch of friendship questions to draw from when it's your turn to ask one. Note that at the start of our very, very first scene, every YO asks a friendship question. Only one asks a friendship question at the beginning of every scene after that. And uh, let's see, uh, Opti, do you want to read the first episode? Yeah. Episode one. It's like the pilot episode of any series. Its purpose is to introduce the setting, the characters, and the themes of the story, hooking the audience and setting expectations for things to come. It's our first chance to see the world in action and to find out how the Wyos interact with it. It's also time to show off how bad the authority is and set the stakes to be no less than the fate of civilization. If this is your first episode and your first scene, and we haven't even talked about rolling dice yet, that's okay. We're going to take this one step at a time and learn as we go. But here's a quick look at the big picture for you. Yeah, so... Uh, normally, this playtest has been played just as a one-shot, but uh, I'm excited that we're going to actually be playing this every week of the Kickstarter campaign. Uh, so we're going to actually go through a series. Uh, so, uh, yeah, this this next section isn't just going to be in theory here. Let's uh, let's hear how that goes. Uh, Derica, do you want to lay out the big picture for us with the series I episode scene section? Thank you. Yeah. Misspent Youth can be played as a one-shot, but works best with a full series. A series is made up of about eight sessions, called Episodes, and tells a complete story about the YOs and their fight against the Authority. One episode should normally take about three hours to play through, though you might need more or less time depending on how your group likes to play. The first one will probably take a lot longer as you get used to the game, the setting, and the characters. Each episode has exactly five scenes. Within each scene, things happen. We get to know the setting and the characters a little better, and it ends with the struggle against the authority. Each scene also has a role within the narrative arc of the episode plot, most of which have special rules to express this. The theme of the first scene is, what's up? Its purpose is to get the story started and to set up the conflict with the authority. The second scene's theme is heating up, in which matters escalate towards a greater confrontation. We're winning is the third scene's theme, which introduces a major advantage to the youthful offenders. And it's followed by the fourth scene, we're losing, <laughs> in which the authority hits back hard. Who's winning is the theme of the fifth and final scene, in which the episode's major point of conflict is resolved one way or another. Scenes typically take about 30 minutes to resolve. Every scene includes a struggle, which is either a win for the authority or the YOs. At the end of an episode, you tally up the number of struggles that each side won to determine whether the Authority or the YOs won the episode. As you go on, the YOs will dismantle systems of control and defeat Authority figures while advancing their goals, but likely not without selling out some of their convictions in the process. This raises the question of whether or not the YOs will save the world or just become the next Authority by losing themselves in the struggle. This game really isn't about who wins. It's about how you stand up against injustice and whether or not you can hold on to your own values in the process. And it's about the journey of discovery, exploring an imaginary world, bringing its characters to life and finding out what happens next. <laughs> that said, there are some rules for determining who wins and who loses. If any YO ever sells out every one of their convictions, the authority wins the series. If the YOs ever have more exploits than total number of authorities system of control and authority figures, the YOs win the series. YOs gain new exploits, dismantle systems of control, and destroy authority figures by winning episodes. The YOs win an episode by winning more struggles than the authority does. But this first episode includes specific instructions on how to play through each scene with the goal of introducing you to the game. So feel free to regard these as just idea prompts and disregard the aspects that get in the way instead of being helpful. The details of all further episodes 
will be up to you. All right, that gets us up to ready to start uh, the first episode. Um, this would be a good time for us to take our first break. Um, if uh, Sarah would switch to the break screen, maybe. Um, maybe we should just talk for a little bit and see when, does anyone know about when Sarah's planning on coming back? Yeah, I think Sarah's going to be back in about in about 10 minutes. So, um, as, yeah, let's... yeah, I wonder if, like, as someone who's just now stepping into this, um, I just, like, wanted to say that I like how clear these rules, like, how clear it goes through and, like, sets up the, like, vibe and the setting of this. Um, I know from my experience with, like, uh, like, D and D especially, and a little bit of Shadowrun. That sometimes there's just this overwhelming amount of like background and history that you have to go through to really like get into it. And this feels very much like I can just step in and live and flourish or get destroyed. I guess in this world, um, I really appreciate that. Oh, that makes me feel really good because uh, something I'm trying really hard to do. <laughs> <laughs> How, if I can ask a question, just the yeah. process. I know you've already done like a lot of asking, but I'm just trying to take up space for Sarah. Um, I I'm wondering how how was the process of like coming up with these written like you have an extremely diverse group of um, characters to choose from. Um, how did how was that process of figuring out um, who these characters would be? Oh, uh, that's actually pretty easy. I had somebody else do it. <laughs> uh, Brilliant. Was, uh, really, I felt like it would be more interesting in diverse groups of characters if I had someone else make up uh, the setting and the, the characters. In the case of this chapter, it's actually the setting is originally designed by Opti and friends. Mm. Uh, it's the setting of Gangs of the Undercity and, and uh, the upcoming uh, role-playing games version. Um, but uh, and there's a lot of background there. But we're really just dipping our toes in there. It's 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 we're playing with the cyberpunk fantasy uh, genre a bit and not, not really delving too deep in the lore of that. So I'm keeping that fairly shallow for this purpose. But um, but I, I wanted to have um, a different author write up the characters and the setting, like the authority and all that stuff about the visage and victims and all that all that stuff defined by another person that we hire as an author uh, to do that. In this case, it was uh, my wife, Courtney, because uh, I felt comfortable asking her to do that before there was any guarantee of payment <laughs> within the family. Uh, so, and, and she's great at making up characters. So yeah, she designed the characters and um, I actually worked with Opti to develop the authority Kingu Corp. The monetization is actually, it came out of Opti's brain, so. Yeah. It didn't come out of my that. brain. It came from uh, a story I was listening to on NPR about <laughs> about uh, Facebook and YouTube actually doing this. Like, yeah, that's what it makes me think like, of. Yeah. Oh, it like, hurt me. You sons of bitches. Like, yeah. That's, you do Let's things that they don't want. Further, you know, Twitch into... does that too, yeah. No offense, Twitch. We love you. When I read this and I saw... The monet that it hit a part of me that that was like raw because because you know I like doing the twitch As a streamer. I like, like doing <laughs> yeah. the streamers like I'm getting demonetized what that's the, you take me to jail don't take my money what <laughs> that's how I live like yeah. you know what I mean? like that like yeah these other things are bad but demonetized and then the MetaCorp saying you gonna lose followers and stuff like. <laughs> What? That's my. I need my people. By the way, check out my face. I'm joking. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> no, that's 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 exactly. And I loved the, I loved the sort of way it reminds you of demonization, right? Like it's, yeah, it's I almost right said there. that when I was reading it. Like that last time the word came up, I almost said demonization, and yeah. I had to work really hard not to. But I was like, "Oh, that's interesting." It's yeah, very it's... much an intentional or at least a happy accident. Yeah. I'm not sure which. Yeah, like being demonized, you know, and and being demonetized, like they're just, they're like so right there. I know. 
Anyway, uh, my SoundCloud is linked in the chat. <laughs> Just kidding. Um. But yeah, I uh, really love this thing. Like, I I love games that are more set in role play part than like rule heavy as what Derek was saying, but more like I don't have to learn like I'm not a role perception or you know, let's do a deception check is really in when people will see it is a simple 2D6 like gameplay. That mm -hmm. that yeah, makes me there there are no skill checks or attack rolls in this game. Mm -hmm. There nobody has any hit points. Yeah. And I do I do love the crunch, but I think in terms of even just like Find, finding like friends or in, introducing friends to role playing, the crunch becomes a barrier sometimes. And this is great to be able to be like, hey, let's play a game and we're just gonna practice like just having fun. And you don't have to do a bunch of math and you don't have to like, it's not like let's do like three hours of setup so that you can play the game. <laughs> um, this is, yeah, this is really good. I can, I definitely am looking forward to uh, making people play with me. <laughs> This is going to be the way that my wife is going to get introduced to more role-playing games, is games like this, <laughs> so I'm always looking out for them. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, think yeah. I think so, too. I tried for a long time to get uh, Christina into RPGs, and Love it her. was... Yeah, and, and she finally got in because they were playing Dresden, which is... Uh, it's not super... Well, they're using the Cortex system, which is just not super crunchy. It's... It's uh, fairly narrative, and so she is now a gamer. She now role plays more often than I do. <laughs> we we were talking about that, like how many different role playing sessions have I had over the last three years, and like I could probably count them on my hand. Um, but like Christina's playing all the time and streaming. So, like <laughs> how far we have come. Actually, I guess that's not true. I play with Cliff probably once every couple weeks, but but Morty. still. But still, <laughs> um, she's had, <laughs> Tom says she's had sixty-eight different role-playing games. Okay, I uh, I can't say that I've had sixty-eight. I don't know. Maybe I have. Nice. Uh, but yeah, like you, Derek, I I enjoy crunch too. Like I really like a good. I'm gonna spend the next four hours creating my character type session. Like you know that 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 hits the spot for me as well and and doing critical damage and calculating things on my calculator about how much you know damage i did to the dragon i like that stuff too but also this is scratching a different uh part of my brain so. you know i feel like if uh if you're playing a crunchy game that you really have gotten to know you know it pretty well you're not just learning it and it takes you more than an hour and a half to make a character even if you're taking your time that's too long like well, that's time. just like your. I like the crunch, man. but that's it is. It's totally <laughs> my opinion. Absolutely, uh, you know, I, I I could go for that hour and a half long character generation session, but if it takes more than that, no, no too much. <laughs> that's, that's yeah, crazy. it might be Stockholm syndrome. I might like it because <laughs> I was just forced to do it. <laughs> now it's my sweet spot, whether I, or not it's healthy. Yeah. I would make fun of uh, my husband constantly when he plays things like. Uh, what's the thing that just had a new game come out? The Elden like Ring? Elden Ring game, like the Dark Souls. When he plays Dark Souls and he spends like forty-two hours like <laughs> figuring out like his character or like um, like games like that, um, and I like would make fun of him. And now I'm like making characters for like taking hours for fun, making characters I will never have the opportunity to play. Um, so I so I get it now. I get it now. Hey, yeah. Sarah, well, Sarah's back. back. Hi. Hello. Um, we uh, finished up all the intro stuff and got to the part where we're before we break for the first scene. And, oh, great. Uh, so we're just chatting about the experience, and uh, they've been saying nice things about the stuff that I wrote. <laughs> More compliments. We were on our best behavior, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't need mom. Before we break, we now have 70 backers. And we are at forty-seven forty-five. Thanks, everybody. Yay! Whoop, whoop. Thank you so much uh, for the support, for joining us on Twitch. 
And you guys ready now? Uh, back Actually, in- yeah. yeah. I just want to say before we do go to the break, uh, to those of you who have backed, if you're listening now, uh, thank you so much for supporting us. Um, however, it uh, it would also be super helpful if you made some social media posts yeah. and just maybe uh, mentioned it to some people who maybe you think might have heard about it, but just just maybe make sure, uh, please. Uh, I, I hate being pushy and asking people to do direct things like that, but it would really be helpful for us just uh, spreading that word of mouth around uh, about the show. If they missed the... Uh, the playthrough right now, they'll be able to, to watch it on Twitch, I believe, uh, video playback. So uh, if they want to get to know the game, uh, There's this is a great way to do it. Um, but there are also other videos and stuff out there to check out. So Misspent Youth has been out for a while, and the Robert Bowles and Austin Game Designer. And we are uh, uh, building from the foundation that he provided us. So would help us do that please uh please back the kickstarter if you haven't yet and would like to and if you have please uh spread the word that's super helpful too awesome and if it helps if you need somebody to rebel against uh hey you punk ass guys uh don't you dare support that kickstarter you hear me so now if you want to fight back <laughs> against that, you can channel all that energy. I didn't like Opti talking to me. I don't want to listen to him. I'm going to back that Kickstarter. Do what you want to do. Do what you need to do. Do what you have to. Do what you must. We are here to provide you with whatever motivation is required. <laughs> oh, so. my gosh. I love these people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we're about ready to go into the actual action of the first scene, uh, which there's more setup to read through and we'll, that it introduces the struggle rules as we get in the first struggle. So we'll, we'll get to that as we get to well, it. We will struggle. Oh, yes. I think that <laughs> would be a good time for our first break. Um, you got it. All right. We'll be back soon, folks. So, Welcome back, everyone. Hey. All right, I think we uh, we're ready to start the first episode, right? Yeah, and we're at I am. 73 I'm backers, $4,835. We're almost to 50%. Woo, woo, nice. Woo. Woo, woo. Uh, let's uh, dive in with the friendship questions. Normally, we start a scene with one friendship question, but since this is the first scene ever, uh, everyone will ask a friendship question. Uh, who wants to start? Uh, I will. Because I'm, I'm, I just realized I'm the most experienced player at this. Yeah, point. show us how it's done. You yeah. also like this is also your favorite part of this game. <laughs> this is <laughs> absolutely. Um, all right, let's see. Are we asking them two particular people, or uh, yeah, I'm going to choose one of yep. you, one of your characters, to ask this question to in character. Okay. So, um, this will be a challenging one for Golden Boy. You're muted. Okay, let's go. Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, what did you help me steal, and why did you help me? Oh, how in the... Uh... <laughs> oh, man, huh? that does put you on the spot. <laughs> Maybe you didn't even realize you helped them steal something or him them uh, steal something. Anyway, answer it however you would like to, but but in character. <laughs> that was great. I got There's a no workaround. I got okay. a workaround. Okay, I can't remember. Was your character? I am Who's your character? Panda, I'm the hacker. For like 40 seconds, I fully forgot we were streaming, and I was just really <laughs> involved. Hmm. <laughs> I help you. <laughs> Got it. And this is going to be a really a cop-out. Ha, huh, my dad's cop. It's going to be a cop-out uh, because here goes what it's going to be. We were playing baseball in the in the yard. 
and I, yep, you see the joke. <laughs> and, uh, no. <laughs> and we was played. And I did something distracting. Maybe I shook the earth a little bit, but I helped you steal second. It was great. <laughs> Back to break now while I kick Shay's ass. Hey, you did it. You you asked me the question. I helped you, and it works with my character. Maybe I feel bad for you because you was doing not as well, and, I, and everybody was picking on you, or somebody was just being mean to you. So I was like, I look like, well, like I'm nine. You guys are all faster than me. Exactly. So you know, I give the kid a little break. I you know, I was in the I was in like watching, of course, uh, and I was like, you know, just did a good like little stomp, like. <laughs> And everybody thought I was just rocking with everybody, but it kind of threw somebody off when they were throwing a pitch and they missed, they were throwing a, a ball and they missed it and you was able to steal second. I, I just want you to Honestly, know Panda is very pleased and grateful to you, but Sarah is livid. <laughs> Literally the best thing you could have done. All right, so... I'm in awe. All right, so Shay, uh, I guess you'll be the next one to ask a friendship question. You can ask one of any of the other youthful offenders, including back at, at a Panda or Sarah, um, or you could ask for that of a, oh, one of so the others. Good. Okay, I got one. So um, I believe the character I have is Char. So here we go. What band are we both really into, and what are they like? <laughs> Let's see. We are both into uh, a band called the Hitari, and uh, they are a a band that was is a punk rock band that are originally from the undercity of Neo Babylon, and um, we all have different favorites like uh, like the Goblin Drummer or the Centaur Roadie, who sometimes you know makes appearances on stage that's that's what we like we like under city punk rock <laughs> yes we do yeah all right toss it to char ask a friendship question all right let's see doesn't have to be um, round robin but if you do want to carry in that tradition you'd be asking a derica or a, a truce a question but that said, you can go in whatever direction you choose with it. <laughs> um, oh, no. <laughs> the giggle. <laughs> let's see. Uh, why do you think I'm afraid of you? That's the truth. <laughs> Me? <laughs> um, I think you're a little afraid of me um, because... I saw someone try to steal your like couture bag and I beat the shit out of them. <laughs> um, which may have been a little overkill. Um, but they were stealing from you and you're my friend and like whatever. Hmm. So so okay, got it. Woo. Okay, uh so that was a Big round of friendship questions. We're down to one more. Uh, Derica, you can ask anybody. Feel free to direct it at whoever you wish. Uh, the only one who has, hasn't been asked or put on the spot yet, though, it's is Sarah. Panda, right? Yes. Oh, this is this is for us, Sarah. Um, why don't you fully trust me? <laughs> Shay, are you all right? <laughs> He's not. <laughs> Hey, I don't know why. <laughs> For the record of everyone listening, um, I think Sarah trusts me. <laughs> I uh, just think this gives Sarah a really good chance to just be mean to me. I, because you tend to hit first, ask questions later, and I tend to do all my digging first. Like I'm definitely a risk taker and everything, but not when it comes to physical confrontation. So sometimes I'm afraid to bring a problem to you because you might just go fight the problem and, like, I'm looking for a more indirect approach. And tomato, tomato, you know? All right, that was a good round of friendship questions. We will do this again at the beginning of every other scene, but only one question. <laughs> so um, let's move on to the story. If we're ready. Uh, you okay there, Shay? 
I am good now. I had to get those laps out, but I'm good. All right. Uh, is this, was that in reference to the thing about uh, Char having uh, their purse nearly stolen? <laughs> oh, that was for the uh, the uh, Derica question to a panda. Oh, that right, really, yeah. that really uh, made me chuckle. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you say chuckle like that? I can't. <laughs> <sighs> okay. All right. So let's see here. We'll start the uh, story. In the future, there will be more uh, setting the scene um, in the hands of the, the YOs. But uh, this one's uh, for the very beginning. We'll we'll have it fairly spelled out. So. Today is the first day of school in the fancy new school built by Kingu Corp. So far, it seems pretty cool, and now it's time for lunch. The school cafeteria resembles a shopping mall food court with every Kingu Corp fast food subsidiary represented. This is awesome. You are hanging out together in the lunchroom on the first day of school in the fancy new school. It's exciting to have your favorite fast food available in the school cafeteria, along with mix your own soda dispensers. Sitting at the table together, our youthful offenders prepare to eat their lunches. What are you each having? So before we jump in, I'll talk about this uh, section of a scene, which is free play. Uh, start by describing the food. This is an icebreaker, a way to get right into character without having to think too hard about it. Imagine what it would be like to be there. The echoey sounds of the large cafeteria with the beeps of machines, the sounds of many voices, the smells of the different foods, Burgers, tacos, french fries, noodles, and kebabs. The bright light coming in from the huge windows along one side, through which you can see an outdoor fountain with the statue of the Kingu Corp CEO at its center. Talk about each other's food, ask what each other's classes were like, make stuff up, and try to slip into the mindset of teenagers at a new fancy school. After the conversation starts going and everyone has had the chance to talk for a while, it'll be time for the kickoff, but we'll save that for later. Looks like Sarah had to step away for a moment. Uh, let's. Keep it rolling for now, but uh, if she doesn't rejoin us soon, we'll we'll pause. So I yeah, go ahead. This is a free I, play scene. Uh, every scene has a free play section, and then a struggle that ends the uh, scene. So, um, Truce is wearing a very colorful uh, cardigan, much much like this, um, and has piled her plate um full of um like one of each of the main um <laughs> food choices uh so it has hamburger and a taco and like a, a hot dog and a slice of pizza all all there um this is left over from um having times growing up where there wasn't always enough food uh and um is is just chowing down uh on our lunch. I think um, Jace, Golden Boy, uh, tries not to stare at at the amount of chowing down that uh, truth, uh, truth, is, truth is doing. I am, like, right now just focused on a nice little plate. It has some uh, two pieces of baked chicken, a quarter, a half cup of rice, uh, with a, a little bit of salt and pepper, uh, with um, I can't uh, with a butter substitute that's not real butter, but it's more healthier. It has like the fill butter, unbelievable butter, unbelievable butter, and a <laughs> thermal of water usually. Um, and he just with his fork and knife is putting like really small cuts and just eating and just looking around, and saying, um. And that's all he says. And he just continues to eat. <laughs> um. this, this, uh, um, and try, he, literally, he is trying to not look, not too much, but he, because he got glasses on, so he can do a quick peeks. But he is just, here's everybody's kind of eating. I it's forgot like, fries. <laughs> you, you know, um, you, can, you can get fries later. It's totally fine. Yeah. Uh. I mean, you got an assortment of things. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yes, that's one of those assortment of things. 
I I think that um, Tar is probably sitting off a little bit to herself, a little broody to their self, and uh, they are probably they probably have some sort of expensive water. <laughs> it might even be bubbly water. I don't know, or maybe it's infused with some sort of. Uh, it's like sage know. infused water, like dragon fruit yeah. and and <laughs> ginger <laughs> or something. <laughs> like no, no, not sweet at all. Just the the memory of of sweetness, <laughs> and um, probably have some sort of expensive sashimi that they're eating with. Um, <laughs> They're not this rich, but I might, but maybe some sort of like ivory chopsticks or something. I don't know. You maybe brush your own fancy chopsticks, set <laughs> right? Like, your, yeah, like, purse. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes. Um, and and like the satchel. the only thing that like sort of looks a little bit off is that there's um there's like sort of uh black electrical tape around the the chopsticks like in sort of weird arcane patterns that looks just sort of jarring alongside the other more expensive looking accoutrement <laughs> that's a 70 dollar word you could trade that word for <laughs> one of the tiers of our kickstarter <laughs> <laughs> Trying not to, trying not to stand out because they don't care for, for people looking at them. All right, and sitting down at the table with their uh, tray of stuff, uh, what does Panda got for lunch? Panda uh, sits down and has really greasy pizza, uh, and yeah, it, and and like greasy chicken tenders. Oh, one of those, one of those. So a slice of pizza, but also like <laughs> a Philly cheesesteak that like when you pick it up, it's just leaking out of the other side, like a real Philly che cheesesteak. Um, oh, that sounds lovely. Yeah. So and it's uh, also disgusting. And and Panda like at first, uh, as as they sit down with their tray, um, they reach in their bag and pull out a uh, their their cyber kit, um. But, like, then, like, it, with one hand, they've got the pizza and take a bite and then drop the pizza and, like, see all the grease dripping down. And so they open their, like, AR screen uh, so that they're not getting grease all over their computer and just starts, uh, like, typing and moving stuff in the air in front of them, uh, getting lost in in the internets. Golden Boy, G Golden Boy, like, forcefully gets up and says, I'm going to get a napkin and just walk towards <laughs> where the cafeteria and he's getting like handfuls i'm i'm gonna okay. go get one of those cheesesteaks <laughs> after you after you take out the uh the first napkin pouch from the fancy napkin dispenser you'd actually have to purchase additional napkin pouches Welcome to the There's only one provided per per meal Our sits just... back and and out of the corner of their eye sees this and wonders, is this the true potential of technology? No longer having to wipe your fingers to use your internets. Uh, internets. Right, you were like on your on yeah. your internet. Yeah. yeah. So I've got my greasy fingers and everything. But she doesn't have to use the mouse or anything. She's she's just greasy fingers touching <laughs> it's the internet. Just the word internet, plural. Oh. <laughs> like the... <laughs> Char, Char, Char doesn't spend too much time on the on the cyber web um, Panda, Panda stops because they would enough. rather read a book. Panda stops long enough to um, uh, smile with a mouthful of cheesesteak and uh, pat your back uh, oh, no. with the greasy hand. Who's okay. back? Yours. <laughs> <laughs> I recoil. Uh, no, he, thank you. He no, just thank goes, you. Friendship. <laughs> That's not friendship. That's gross. 
Stop. Hey. Um, well, agency, stop. You know what's not gross? We just hit $5,010. Woo. Hey. That's not gross at so all. With that, I'm going to introduce the kickoff here. <laughs> Uh, most of the kids <laughs> seem excited about their favorite fast food items being served in the, in the cafeteria, but quite a few can't afford to eat here. Several students point and snicker at a couple of kids. A cafeteria attendant points out the sign that declares outside food and beverages to be prohibited. Those kids seem to be on the verge of crying, and they don't seem to know whether to go eat their food somewhere else or throw their sack lunches in the garbage so they can enter the lunchroom. This fancy new school seems to have some corporate drawbacks. A few more students have arrived with their sack lunches, and the cafeteria attendant points up the sign to them as well. Looking around the cafeteria, you all see that some students seem uncomfortable about this and have paused their eating, while others are clearly enjoying seeing the poor kids get humiliated in front of everyone. Uh, this doesn't seem right. So now we are going to move on to the struggle. Uh, normally, it won't be as uh, presented to you like now. It's time for the struggle. You may uh, show up in, uh, in less the obvious struggle ways. Struggle brought to you by Kingu Corp. I believe I am struggling. <laughs> but, uh, Can we just do a check in? To... Everybody feeling a struggle? Yeah, coming? I feel a little bit of a struggle <laughs> coming. Yeah. I think it's been a while since I've had Shay read something. So why don't you read the start reading the part about the struggle? Uh, for a bit, it's a big section, so we'll pass the torch at some point. But uh, where it says read this, it says uh, the struggle. Every scene concludes with a struggle on page. Uh, what's the page number? Ten. It doesn't tell me. Ten. Oh, ten. Yes. Ten. The. I gotta do this for this. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the struggle. Every scene concludes with a struggle. When a struggle begins, lay out the struggle sheet, then set the stakes. The authority declares the objective, what will happen if they win, and the YOs um, must declare their hope, what will happen if they win instead. All right, and the Paul, first... I'm going to interject in just here. Uh, I haven't gotten around to editing this for better flow. I will jump ahead to this section and toss it back to you. So. In this struggle, oh crap, I have to scroll ahead. Give me a sec. The authority's objective is that most of the students will accept this situation as normal and allow the kids who brought their own lunches to be turned away and ostracized. That is what the authority wants to have happen. Youthful offenders' hope is what you will want to have happen. Uh, normally, you'll, you'll have more choice in this, but this one's laid out for you. Your hope is that the majority of your classmates will see this situation as an injustice and also to make sure that the people who can't afford to buy food at the Kingu Corp cafeteria feel important, included, and get to eat. Uh, back to you, Shay. Uh, where do you want me to start at? Uh, the authority describes? Uh, yes. The authority describes what badness they're up to. Send the stage for the struggle and places one of their tokens on a number. This ends their turn. The number the authority claims at the start of struggle is one higher than a scene number. So the authority will put their first token on the number two for the first scene, three on the second scene, four on the third scene, five and nine on the fourth scene, this is a special case, and six on the fifth scene. Then it is a, uh, then it's a yo's turn to stand up. First, they roll the dice. If the total is not a number that the authority already claimed, they declare which convention, conviction they are using and how they are using it to oppose the authority. If the fairy verse yo rolls a struggle in the first number claimed by the authority, pretend you rolled any number adjacent to the authority number and claim that one instead. The, num the only time this happens is on the first dice roll of a struggle. After that, the authority takes a turn. First, react to what the Yells did and really dig into describing how it messes up the authority's day. Then declare what happens in response. This can either be raising tensions or perhaps releasing tensions with a direct overt strike against the Yells or something or some or someone or something that care they care about. Make it dangerous and claim a number that is adjacent up one or down one to the number 
that was claimed by the yo. Then there's another yo's turn to stand up, to follow the same procedure. First roll the dice. Uh, if the number rolled has been unclaimed, declare a conviction that describes uh, how your yo uses it to get things done. Claim that number by placing one of your tokens on it. You can only use a conviction, conviction once per struggle, but you can use convictions that have been sold out. More on that later, if you wish. When the yo stands up and uses a conviction, conviction uh, they have sold out, the authority claims two numbers instead of one on their turn. Claiming numbers that are as close to as possible to the one they just claimed by the youthful offenders. Then the authority takes another turn, just like they did before. Taking, taking the hits, describing a response, and claiming a number that is adjacent to one of those YOs. Uh, if both adjacent numbers are already claimed, claim the closest possible adjacent unclaimed number. When there are two possibilities, the authority can gets to choose whichever they want. Um, this is, goes on until one of the wilds rolls a dice and gets a result that matches the a claimed number. If the number is already claimed by a YO, the YO wins the struggle. Woo! Describe how the convictions used to claim that number uh, claiming that number brings about hope for the YOs. The scene ends with the authority describes uh, how they must deal with their failures of the objectives. Nice. Thank you. Uh, Opti, since this is your favorite part of the game, why don't you read uh, about losing and selling out? <laughs> I felt like <laughs> a dig. <laughs> <laughs> since you're a loser, loser sellout, why don't you read this? <laughs> if, the, if the YOs... Uh, roll a number that is already claimed by the authority. The authority wins! <laughs> now, the player must choose a conviction and make an even harder choice. Either take the loss and describe how you tried to use your conviction, but it just wasn't enough to win. Or sell out your conviction and describe how betraying the very values it represented brings you what you need to win. In this case, your conviction is permanently transformed into its sold-out version, but the YOs win the struggle. If you sell out a conviction, that struggle does not count towards the episode's score. Keep score throughout an episode, tracking whether the YOs or the authority wins each struggle. The side that wins the episode is the side with the most struggle victories. Struggles that ended by selling out a conviction do not count towards the score. Most scenes include one or more special rules during a struggle. These are always declared before any dice are rolled during a struggle. Derica, would you like to pick it up from there? With yeah. the special rules? Special rules that apply to every struggle in this episode. One, round robin. No YO can stand up a second time until every YO has stood up at least once. You can go in any order, but unless the struggle ends early, everyone gets a turn. Two, violence is ugly. If any YO stands up by using a conviction to inflict violent harm against a person, the authority will claim two numbers instead of one on their next turn. As the authority claims the numbers, describe the terrible consequences of giving them an excuse to escalate the authority's use of force. Brutal bodily harm to a YO, a bystander jumping in to help getting maimed, cops beating a defenseless civilian, things like that. This game isn't like most RPGs where the fight is about who can win a tactical combat scenario. Not everybody or nobody has hit points or damage values. Winning doesn't mean killing the bad guys or even beating them up. Killing and beating are what the bad guys do. YOs can resort to violence for short-term solutions at great expense, but it has costly consequences and repercussions. Remember that the YO's goal in the struggle is to achieve their hope, not to hurt people. Violence plays right into the goals of authoritarianism, giving those without, giving those with power an excuse to justify their use of force, and so it provides an advantage to the authority. Note this only applies when the YO's use of violence to harm, uh, use violence to harm people, not when they damage property. Awesome. 
All right, I'll pick it up from here with uh, the scenes one struggle. So we've set out the struggle sheet. I believe it's visible there in the uh, in the overlay. Yep. In case you were wondering where Fragging Unicorn stands on property damage. <laughs> right. Uh, so the scene one struggle, we set out the struggle sheet in, um, let's see, we've declared, my objective again is that the, most of the students will accept the situation as normal and the kids who brought their own lunches will be ostracized. Your hope is that the majority of the classmates see this as injustice and uh, get to include and uh, feed the, uh, the kids who brought their own lunches. So uh, I will start by saying the kids with their own lunches all seem embarrassed and sad. The first two start toward the garbage can, ready to throw away the food they brought from home. As the table with the most popular kids laughs at them and calls them pathetic. I claim the number two. I'll stand up. All right. Roll the dice. Show you guys how it's done here. Old panda style. <laughs> Oh, here, Whoa. let me let me uh, go to uh, this section in the text, though, and read it. And now it's the way I will turn to do something. Whoever <laughs> speaks up first gets to stand up first. That Before was... <laughs> anything else, they must roll the dice. If you roll a two, claim the number three instead. Uh, otherwise, place your token on the number you rolled and declare which conviction you're using to stand up to the authority. Then describe actually what your YO does and how it helps. So, Sarah, show us how it's done. Yeah, I rolled an eight. So I'm going to move my shiny green token onto this eight and claim it. And then I'm going to choose a conviction. So here I go. Where's old Pedro here? Uh, I'm going to use um, my breacher conviction because of course I am. And with my greasy, um, <laughs> my greasy fingers, uh, the, the napkins are back, so I'm going to kind of subtly make my, my little AR screen uh, smaller and then grab the napkin and kind of like pretend I'm wiping my hands but really start pushing the buttons there so that I'm being all sneaky sneak. And I uh, go ahead and access the student accounts and fill uh, all of these kids that are bringing their lunches. I fill their uh, accounts with uh with money uh with bitcoins <laughs> in order to pay for their uh their food if they want to um which of course is taking money from uh the authority and also making sure that they can um sit and join their classmates all right so yep that was how you stand up uh Take that authority. Now, with the first dice roll of every struggle, if you happen to roll a, a, a dice roll that would end the struggle right away on the first turn, um, it actually doesn't end. You would end up picking uh, the number three or a number that's adjacent to what the authority chose. But uh, otherwise, all the other numbers are safe. But going forward now, every dice roll carries with it the possibility of ultimate failure or success. Total success, of course. Um, <laughs> that said, there is one more special rule for this scene and this scene only. Don't get used to it, but it's called kid gloves. So the very first time that you roll uh, a failure, you know, essentially roll the dice that would hit a number that's already claimed by the authority. Instead of failing, you get to knock my token off and claim it with yours. Just that Ooh. once. Just that once. Just so you, you know, maybe start to think you can do something and win against the authority. But after that, I don't expect that in future scenes. No more so, kid gloves. So false hope. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I might be uh, giving you a kid gloves, but I'm going to claim something here. But first, I'll tell you what happens. Uh, oh. Throw me for a loop there. So, yeah, the transfers start going through, and uh, some of the kids are like, oh, look at this. And then then there's a there's an alert, and all of a sudden uh, – uh, like a bunch of a bunch of accounts get locked down. Uh, both of the kids who didn't even have the money to begin with, but also the kids whose money got taken from there. Uh, it doesn't look like they've traced you, Panda, but uh, seems like the authority is on to the fact that there's some uh, there's some breaching going on, and there are some security protocols to prevent uh, such blatant hacking moves such as that. Security protocols. So I claim the number seven. I'm scam. gonna stand up. All right, roll the dice. So I'm scared you pick seven. Okay, here we go. 
like that because I know me. Oh, <laughs> yeah, he rolled seven immediately. Immediately. All right. So I that knew. would normally be a loss or a sellout because of the kid gloves rule and only because of the kid gloves rule. I'm going to take my token off. And you get to claim it in addition to uh, using your conviction, describe like somehow some sweep of luck as well that saves your ass from what might have been a failure. And go ahead and put one of your tokens on the seven there. You can choose the green or the black ones. One. All right. Okay. So. Hmm. I am going to use trusted and talk to the the higher ups and be like, uh, man, I'm, my dad told me about like the other schools hacking us. Like, this could be part of that kind of sting that's been happening. This is really bad. We should, um, I just, you know, I don't want, you don't let them know, but you know, I've been looking out in different schools like that. And this has been becoming a big problem, probably from those breachers, you know, from the breachers things that are happening out there, you know? Oh, oh my, this is very troubling. Yes, there's a, there's a data breach alert and, oh, um, I'm afraid a number of you have your accounts locked down until this is sorted out. Uh, I'm, I'm very, very sorry this has happened, but... Uh, You're doing the best you can, and that's what we appreciate. You know, you know, maybe it would be okay if just this once we just let them eat their lunches, but no, no, rules are rules. Uh, so as uh, she seems rather resolute, uh, the attendant uh, turns to you and says, oh, you have your food over there. Why don't you just uh, go on and take a seat? We'll handle this. And she turns back to face the uh, the poor kids uh, with a determined and uh, not terribly friendly look on her face. I will claim the number six. Who's going to stand up? Because of the round robin rule, uh, uh, Sarah and Shay cannot stand up yet until someone own, else guys. Do it, so it's up to um, Derek or Opti. I will stand up. All right, roll the dice. A nine. Ooh, okay. Tension mounts as the board fills. And I will sort of casually, without trying to be noticed. Uh, before you do anything else, please move your there you go token. Oh, player. sorry about that. Yeah, I and will. Declare your conviction that you're using. I'm going to use rich, and basically <laughs> grab in my purse and walk over to the kids who are having to throw their stuff away. Actually, no. I'll go. I'll go to the lunch ladies or the lunch people and, and just sort of um, very subtly without trying to draw attention to anybody, just sort of slip them money and say like, we'll this cover it. Can we all just go back to eating in peace and washing our hands? <laughs> <laughs> of course, employees always wash their hands. At point to the scientists, employees must wash their hands. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, yeah, we, we can't just give away the food for free. Oh, it's not free. I'm paying for it. Oh, oh I thought this was a bribe for something. Oh, God. <laughs> so, yeah, they, they, they take the money and they, they sort of reluctantly say, all right, we have a, um, this student here has generously made a donation for a fund. Uh, we got, a. 80 stands here for food for anyone who needs it. And then like some of the rich kids come and run up and get to the head of the line, even though they already have food, they're running up to take the spot. So, so there's, there's no chance for the kids with their sack lunches to move up and take advantage of your offer. As I like sure that 10. physical violence is bad. Cause right now, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you <laughs> not saying it's not effective. Because <laughs> these rich kids need an ass whooping. <laughs> they took the spot. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they just did. <laughs> Even though they, they left their fully their half eaten meals at their table to go make sure to take up the, 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 the charity spots that Char opened up. Property damage is allowed. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's all allowed. I'm just saying. Anyway, Derek, you're the only one who hasn't stood up yet. So, uh, 
the round robin <laughs> rule uh, makes it so no one else could stand um, up. You could just choose not to stand into, up, though. I go it's into fine. a rage. Um, oh, okay. And, uh... Hold on, hold on, hold on. You got to roll the dice then if you're going to stand up. <laughs> Eight. Oh. Ooh. That means you win. It is a win. Because really? of yeah. who, who got the eight before? Me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, tapping into the breacher conviction that was used to claim that you used your own conviction and that to sort of win the day. So go ahead and Amazing. do what I you do. I use outrage. And I, uh, I go over to the, like, um, to, like, where, like, all of this, the system stuff set up. And I just start just flipping tables and uh, just, like, throwing, like, screens and, like, smashing screens and stuff. And I'm like, guess everyone eats today. Yeah, and then this apparently the um, face of the other students uh, just just start cheering and like tossing tables and throwing things around, but uh, but also like some of them are bringing food to the kids with the who brought their own lunches, and some of the kids with their own lunches are just like you know having fun and throwing their own food into the mix, and uh, it's a great time except for also a gigantic mess. That's so, not my problem. Good job. <laughs> I so, back away Charles from all like, the mess. Uh, yeah, I I got a, uh, a handkerchief in my pocket. I'm I'm busting my sh you know dusting off my shoes. Uh, I'm yeah. I'm grabbing. I'm finally grabbing that Philly cheesesteak. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's an absolute raucous mess, and it takes forever for order to be restored. And it's just there's no way any one person could be caught and punished, so to speak. But uh, uh, the, the 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 crappy uh, rich kids do get the, the not not char, but I mean the the ones who were uh, <laughs> the crappy ones. <laughs> yeah, uh, the jerks. Uh, they they get very pelted and uh, have no ability to continue eating uh, their ill-gotten food. So good job, you guys won yeah. this one. I guess you're supposed to win the first scene, so it's all right. Oh, don't uh, belittle our win. One to zero, authority. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> only because you had kid gloves to rely on, they won't be. They won't be there to yeah, save that's, you. Yeah, that's that's fair. We would have like I lost make real the quick. Rules. You did. <laughs> yeah, I did, and uh, I at least know how to follow the rules, <laughs> yeah. uh, because I make them. Uh, so let's move on to another rule I made: the the reflection uh, way section to, to sort of cap off the scene. Uh, so before moving on to the next scene, let's reflect on what happened. Ask each other questions and give answers. Every player, except for the authority, choose a reflection question to ask. These are on page uh, 14, 14 of the document. Um, so they're kind of like the friendship questions, but they're very much focused and related to what's just gone down here. So there's six example ones, and the sixth one is what other question that's not here or would you like to ask? So... Every question is technically on the list. Uh, who would like to go first, though? This time we're going to go with uh, everyone's going to ask one. You can, you can ask it of yourself or another youthful offender. Um, I want to ask... Um, I want to ask Jace, uh, Golden Boy, um, what has... Uh, what has changed about how you view Panda? What has changed is that I view Panda as in Panda needs to be looked over, looked at, especially in the hygiene area. So I'll be making <laughs> sure I bring extra napkins, maybe some hand sanitizer. Um, and just, you know, helping Panda look their best self. Okay, I just, like, hacked into school property and, and, and created money out of nothing, and what you took away is I'm stinky. <laughs> no, 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 no. Ew, I took your stinky. way. I took away that you're messy. I didn't say anything about your stench. And I didn't say you have to. I'm just Fair. saying. I just made. First, I said something about the nastiness. First, you make the comment about stealing second. Now you're commenting on my hygiene. Like, Shay, 
You and Sarah are fighting right now. <laughs> it's not my fault. Look, I just want a structured, It'll be like, fine. cell. And you We're just, all friends and you here. all, your grease almost went into my, 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 my clothes. And this is like hand pressed. And so I cannot deal with grease. It's all, I'm trying to help you out. Make you, like... Thank all you right, for your next? question. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, that was great. Uh, I'll ask one. Um, truce. What has changed about how you think of the authority? I think I always knew the authority was greedy. I th I think I I have experienced the pettiness of the authority now. Cool. Their stuff is easily breakable. They should fix that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who's next? Shay or Afi? Okay, I got a question. Um, you know what? Okay, here we go. This is for... Give me a second, actually. Let me reword this right. Yeah. Char, how do you feel about what just happened? <laughs> I <laughs> I have lots of feelings about it, and none of them complex. It's just embarrassing that such a profitable corporation that has plenty would treat people so awfully when they don't have to. It's almost as if the humiliation was the point i just it's just gross frankly just Eddie. gross so gross it sucks the grease off <laughs> <laughs> all right what's your reflection to, question char unless to, you had more to add to wit i find that gross grosser than <laughs> than panda's fingers <laughs> The stain of Panda's finger grease will wash out, but I'm not sure that the pettiness of Kingu Corp children food machine will. Anyway, <laughs> um, so what I am finding myself wondering is uh, who hasn't been asked one yet? Uh, me. Uh, Panda, since you were the first one to stand up, my question is, what do you want to do next? Are uh, we going to mm. let this stand? I want to think about what just happened and how it's going to affect the long term. Because, like, did we just make sure people ate today? Or is this going to be a problem tomorrow where they bring more security and, and harsher measures? More ma more machines. More, more machines. Yeah, I, I know that's what you want. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, I, don't want, I don't want them to replace them, but that feels like the logical next step for them. So um, how do we make sure that, that like our fellow students are, are protected, but also like we're freaking kids. Like, aren't we supposed to be eating, like, mm. to grow big and strong or whatever and make our brains develop mm. or whatever? Like, isn't stymieing that a a, a thing that d isn't advantageous for anyone? Um, just because what? Because they um, can't afford the, the greasy food here? Like, it... Yeah. It's not right. Give, give a student a taco boat and they'll eat for the day, but tear down Kingu Corp and maybe they'll eat. You're right. Teach, every day. Teach the students to fish for tacos. Taco, to head I, out on their own taco boat. I, I think mm, the point tacos. is that this isn't. 
this has just been an ethical commercial war crime and we need to do something about it. it it's not a war a war crime. Like you, you're making it, this needs to be done. It's not like a war crime. It's like extreme. It's just, we need, there's pu- not getting the enough system. food what? is a problem. <coughs> Jace. Right. Yeah, of course. That's where we use uh, systems within of what we have to make it better. I will wrap up the scene with my one or two sentence ending here. Uh, with yeah, it's absolute chaos in in the uh, in the food court. A bunch of kids uh, get to eat. A bunch of kids make a mess. The the uh, cafeteria attendant that was uh, stopping the kids from coming in the first coming in the, eating their own lunches in the first place uh, just it's absolutely plastered with every manner of fast food and just just covered, absolutely covered in the. Uh, Largely laughed at uh, uh, before eventually, uh, like four fully riot armored lawjacks come stomping in, carrying their huge stun maces and uh, just step out in formation. That quiets things down real quick, and the bell goes, and uh, kids kind of go to their classes or, in some cases, the locker rooms to clean up or change, uh, leaving just the most god awful mess behind for the uh, school to deal with. And that's the end of a scene. Um, I guess uh, since it's the first time we've played this together, uh, I, just a reflection question from game writer to uh, players. Uh, how'd that go? Did you have fun? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the DM me didn't want the free, didn't want the... Uh, kid gloves because me rolling a seven was like yep let's start it but <laughs> that that story yeah, that's <laughs> let's, get to... scene two. <laughs> let's just go let's just do this but but yeah i i love it and like i said this system is it's scary i love suspense and that just rolling two dice and then you don't know like that's mwah, chef's kiss <laughs> <laughs> I, I now, because you said that, I'm now imagining that this book comes with a set of teeny uh, gloves, kid gloves. And then after scene <laughs> it's one, it's like those the, little uh, hands that you put on your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> uh, yeah, I've been debating whether or not to actually take the kid gloves rule out altogether, but uh, we'll see. I think it's probably going to stay. I think for episode it, one, I think it's, it's good. Fine. And then... The first time you ever play a game, it's fun to win the very first thing, and then I can, yeah. you can just get crushed <laughs> later. Kickstarter stretch goal, actual kid goal. <laughs> 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 All right, Love so um, before we move on, let's check in on the Kickstarter, see how we're doing. We're at $5,080, 78 backers, uh, so we're over halfway there. Uh Let's let's keep it going, guys. Thank you so much for the support, and and please keep sharing uh, the link everywhere, and and get people watching us because I'm sure once they watch us goofballs, they're gonna be like, this misspent youth stuff seems like it's the game for me. Yeah, we definitely would have spent an hour describing us sitting at the cafeteria table with lunch <laughs> if. <laughs> If you hadn't popped in and be like, all right, and now we transition to the actual like thing that's happening. <laughs> that was actually something that Cliff and I talked about early on is if it's happening, let it happen. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the 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 authority doesn't have to pop in, right? Like if if, yeah. if role play is happening, just let it happen. It's this, so much fun. Yeah. This game is ninety five percent role play, five percent rules. Like <laughs> yeah, I well, I love that. <laughs> I think a part of the authority's role is to control the pacing a little bit and look for those moments to to interject. Yeah. So you pull things into a high point rather than you know winding down through everything you've got and then okay, let's do the next thing. Sometimes that happens too, but it's okay. Like when I was running this game at Gen Con, there was one time at one scene where I just had to pause for a moment. Like you know, I don't really have any ideas. Let's just uh, just take a moment and uh, hmm, talk this out a little bit. And just we came up with something and moved on with the game and. That sort of thing can feel like an intimidating failure as a GM, but not in this game, right? You just you have the freedom to do stuff like that, uh, and it's just all a big co- creative, cooperative, narrative, improv thing. So 
I, I, I didn't really feel embarrassed, but like I might have in another game where you're supposed to be more in control as the GM and know what you're doing. <laughs> oh, sure. I like that I surprised you with the, you know what, you have money now. <laughs> yeah, I had to figure out a way for you to like let that work, but also like, yeah, uh, not be a shortcut to to just win the whole thing because it wasn't stakes, the ending yeah. yet. And I had to fight back against it. So. Yep. I try to use the yes and and not like directly counter players things, but uh, that, that came about as close to doing that as I am comfortable. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> boom, we won. <laughs> what next? You're like, no, we didn't win the whole thing yet. Okay, that was clever, but but no, no, not, not so fast. That's what I, I like about it too is that you feel like you earn it a little bit more, where it's like oh, I don't just win because I rolled the dice really well or something like that. It's it's no, this is going to keep going until, um, I mean, it could happen. I could have rolled wonderfully and stood up in the second turn or whatever. But, um, yeah, I like that that it's got that space to keep building tension and like, oh, uh, yes, but, yes, but, you know, kind of thing. This struggle reminded me of, like, literal news stories I've read where, like, a county is, like, taking free lunches away from people whose kids, you know, like, kids who, like, their parents haven't paid for books or whatever. And so another child goes out and, like, starts a GoFundMe <laughs> and raises all the money. And then the district changes the rules so that you can't pay for other people's lunch. It's like, what yeah. are you guys doing? Yeah. Why do you hate? like goodness so much yeah. why are you trying to like be bad and cartoonishly evil yeah yeah uh this this is a uh, big part of this game is to imagine and uh bring bring up that stuff and uh yeah kick its ass at least mm -hmm. in effigy if you know it's, it doesn't really solve the problem but being imagining how you might solve the problem is it's a good first step it's like so, not having money to go out to eat, but just imagining just a really good cheesecake. So speaking of uh, of of weird corporate effery, I'm uh, getting messages that when people try to share links about the Kickstarter, Facebook is giving them pop ups about spreading COVID misinformation. <laughs> wow! So I'm not sure. I'm not sure what we've done that's flagging COVID. This it's the authority. <laughs> right. Uh, Metabook, like, what are Metabook you doing? Work. Metabook, they're demonetizing us in real time. I'm losing meta points. <laughs> like, what? what you, you guys. That's so good. Metabook's not okay. I don't know what they're. I, I'm like now checking. Like, okay, what did we? What do we have on the on the Kickstarter title? Oh, because we say the only kids that can stop the adults from ruining what's left of the world, they might flag that as untrue. <laughs> this is not a factual statement, friend. Uh, only kids in the this day and age. Only not only on Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk can save us. Uh, uh, let's yeah. let's move into scene two here. Uh, heating up. Uh, we start every scene with a friendship question. So one of you will ask a friendship question. Just one. Who's it gonna be? Ah, I said it first. Right. Um I heard your voice. Yeah. Uh let's see. Uh Char, how did we first meet? Uh let's see. Oh <laughs> we first met. Um we were at the mall. Uh, I was coming out of um, <laughs> Ishtar's secret with uh, with a new purse and and a new sweater, and uh, and you were you were walking out of the uh, salon, and I noticed your hair, and I don't know why, but. Normally, I just walk away from people and don't say anything, but I thought your hair was so super badass that I mentioned, like, I love your hair. And that's that's when we struck up a conversation. Yeah. Beautiful. 
it's a very powerful like you can cut paper with this bob yeah it was yeah. it was super on point oh. as it were <laughs> <laughs> as the days go by school just gets worse Kingu Corp propaganda is everywhere some kids are shown prefer preferential treatment while others seem to have trouble adjusting with no help from the teachers or other students one day youthful offenders are all summoned to the principal's office after getting into some trouble so things haven't been going great in school. You've all landed in big trouble. You've been summoned to the principal's office and you're waiting to find out what sort of punishment you're about to receive. What did you all do that got you in trouble together? Now we move into the free play part of this scene and it's uh, sort of all about your hushed conversation outside the principal's office. Uh, think about how, you're, how your YO feels. Are you afraid, angry and defiant, resolved to your fate? What are your parents going to say about this? You're probably all at least a little freaked out, and you only have a few unsupervised minutes to talk it out with each other. Go. <laughs> well, you just blame it on me. It's fine. Like, uh, my foster parents won't Stop. care anyway. And I'm, like, visibly, like, shaking my, my, like, knees, like, my leg is shaking, and I'm just thinking, like, okay. So just tell me, explain to me what happened. I, 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 I'm trying to figure out, look, what, 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 what went wrong? What we do? What, what happened? Uh, well, oh, go ahead, Char. You explain. Well, Panda <laughs> probably shouldn't have taken such drastic member measures against everybody who was posting on Metabook, uh, Blaming what happened uh, in the cafeteria on on us. Um, so changing it to some sort of funky news story about how uh, renamed it Butt Book and changed right? the logo. <laughs> um, I'm just saying, how... anyone who wants to be a snitch uh, gets their profile picture changed to a dick pic. Right. <laughs> See, that, that's that's the problem. That's the problem right there. See, look. Mm. Panda, look, panda, panda, panda. Let me, let me. You're gonna be a dick. You're gonna get a dick. Yeah, I get. I don't. I, get, I don't like I that get, as a catchphrase. I, I just want to get the name reference. That. Yeah, don't get. Oh, <laughs> I just don't. See, see, but I what do not co-sign. What was? <laughs> be one, get one. <laughs> so <laughs> that's a bumper sticker. <laughs> so panda, <laughs> what happened when you did that? Uh, it was very funny. And, um, yeah, like, we lost meta points or whatever, and then the school is notified, and they think that we're being slanderous or whatever, but the signs were right there. There'd still be proof if, if Truce didn't tear them all down and, and throw a fit. I didn't throw a fit. I stood up for what was right. I mean, I'm, I'm with you. I support I it. Throw, I don't throw fits. I'm just saying I'm not, blame, I'm not the only one to blame in this. You, you too, you too. You look, look, look. We have just a little time to really think about this. Look, I think, let me take the lead on this. Maybe I can smooth it out. You could, I could maybe say you're just expressing your artist self. It wouldn't be as bad as it could get. Uh, also, I'm pretty if, sure the student office worker has a crush on me. I bet, like, we could use that. Gross. Anyway, if, I don't know why you're all so upset about this. Like, it's just getting in trouble. Like, our parents will come and explain things, and everything will be fine. Like, it always is. Well, it always is when your parents can pay them off. Oh, please. The parents don't pay anyone off. They pay taxes like everyone else. Don't, don't make me dick. Uh, at the, at the, at, when, uh, when, when, when Char says that, She's saying it confidently, but there's something in their eyes that sort of reads that they know that that's not quite true, but they don't want to be seen as the implicit. As, yeah, as the as the sort of rich person who gets what mm. they want. Yeah. So again, as first of all, we gotta be a team here. We can't knock people out, knock people down. Uh, we can't just blame truth. 
Can't bl- can't blame you. We can't just say Panda did it. I mean, Panda did do it. I know Panda did it. We can't just say Panda did it though. We have to say like this you guys think I was. was... Wrong? I don't think that's the point. The wrong part was one getting. And I whisper, one was getting caught. That's the that's the wrong part, and two is now wrong to the wrong people. So now we are in this mess, which we can get out of it. It's a clean mess, a mess we can. Not gonna say that joke, Panda. Basically, we're gonna figure this out, all of us. We just need to be calm and collective. Hey, Trust what are me, we gonna do? I am going to try to sway them to thinking that this is a. Actually, this is idea. I've been working on something. Well, actually, what do y'all think we do? I have an idea. What do you think? You just told us all to shut up because you had a plan. So I'm just waiting to hear your plan. Well, I've been thinking <laughs> a couple of days. Maybe this is the point that we start a new student union. Like, this is a business, right? And so businesses, the workers, need unions. So we get the union together. We discuss how we can help King Corp have a better vision by helping kids who are less fortunate that's, that's to gonna, give them lunches. I, I love that get, idea. So yes. what is that going to do in the principal's office right now? Because we're going to say that this is this could be a learning experience of why we need such organization, that we don't have one. Excuse me, but don't unions just end up benefiting the leaders of the unions? Union is going to be the word we use because it's going to butter them up. We, the students, will help, and they will think that they're doing... We're going to get them on their press. Because that's what that's what uh, King U Corp needs, is, like, good press, and make their new school is doing great. And so we will give them good press by saying, oh, we're making sure all students succeed. And <laughs> we, can, we can play on that. So that's what can I'm saying. Can we just say that Panda wanted to advertise the, like, cheesesteaks in the calf and just accidentally uploaded the wrong picture? How about we say that's plan two? That's a good, that's a good plan B. Let's go, let's swing back on that. Accidentally uploaded wieners when I meant to <laughs> talk that about was, that cheese steaks. <laughs> it's really problematic in my personal life. <laughs> uh, Oops, wrong folder. Like, <laughs> it happens to everyone, right? <laughs> send, you know what I mean, chat? You know what I mean. Send foods. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, so I think this is a good time for me to bring in uh, the first beat of the episode, which introduces an element of tension and conflict among the YOs. Well, I didn't really have to work for that. Uh, That begins to struggle. This is represented by the authority figure, the principal. Name the principal Mao. Uh, Let's leave that to the chat and uh, see what they come up with. So go ahead and type in what the principal's name should be. Yeah, good chat chat name. If there's a few of I them, we'll, we'll combine chat. them and mash them up or, or just pick the one we like better. I think if so. it isn't Jeff Sucker Musk, I'm going to be deaf. <laughs> I, 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 Opti, I, uh, uh, I think Send Foods is going to be my new uh, text message to Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> no! I don't, I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Roney. All right, so we've got Mr. two Jordan. names, Mr. Roney and Mr. Jordan. So let's go with Jordan Roney. Uh, Jordan Roney. Put it together. Uh, sorry, uh, oh, little bucket, uh, you had one, Mr. Strickland. So, hmm. He's, we'll save what, what that name like? and use it for someone else later. Jordan Roney okay. Strickland. It's, it's, it's. Uh, it's yeah, hyphenated. Yeah, he, he always uses all three names. <laughs> no, it's not hyphenated. It's yes. just all three names. Yes. yes. Jordan Roney Strickland, and uh, sorry, Tesla, Jordan, and we have to hug off at some point. That's so. principal Jordan Roney Strickland. <laughs> you, Mr. Yeah. Principal. All right. So, one at a time, you're called into the principal's office. The man, Jordan Roney Strickland. Please, someone write that down before I forget it. Uh, uh, Jay Roney Strickland. There we go. Uh, the man looks like a company CEO, very tall and imposing in an expensive business suit. He stands, towering above you, the natural light of his window casting him as a silhouette through the interview and interrogation. His deep, booming voice is commanding. It's time for the second struggle. Before we start, oh, 
read uh, some more in the text here. The second struggle represents the authorities' efforts to sow conflict and break the will of the troublesome students. Instead of having each interview with the principal and an isolated student one at a time in order, we'll handle it uh, like a montage of scenes from each youth offender cut together in one continuous scene. Uh, that way everyone can be involved at once, even though the actual events are a bit more spread out in time. Uh, so uh, does everyone get what I mean by that? So uh, I'll sort of take my turn describing what the principal will say, and then whoever stands up, you know, the camera will pan to that person in the chair by themselves. And then the camera pans back to the principal who talks and does the thing. And then when it pans back, it'll be a different student saying whatever they're saying, sort of clipped together. Um, Classic. All right. So the authority's objective is to sow distrust among the youthful offenders and cause them to be shunned by other students at school for fear of reprisal. The youthful offenders hope you get to choose one. And I have a few examples. Be seen as heroes by most of the kids in school. Trick the principal into believing what you in, that you intend to behave better and receive lesser punishment. Or humiliate the principal or Kingu Corp in some way. Uh, which one do you want? Or, you know, you're experienced gamers. If you want to make something else up, uh, we can do that too. Uh, I'm personally of the number three variety. Humiliation! <laughs> <laughs> I definitely want to take J.R. Strick down a mm. peg. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I feel like that's going to happen because Jace is going to try to do his idea and then everybody else is going to do the other idea. Uh -huh. So he'll just run along with it. He is just, he's going to say a word and then somebody's going to say something else and he's going to be like... <sighs> <laughs> All right, well... Uh, before we get into the struggle here, uh, we got the struggle sheet laid out. It's cleared off. All the tokens are removed because it's a new struggle. Uh, special rules. We've got round robin and violence is ugly still in play for every scene. No more kid gloves, but there is a new rule, a resistance token. This is a little blue with the R2 on it. A special resistance token will be gained by either the YOs or the authority at the end of the struggle. It represents either the people's growing awareness uh, when used by the youthful offenders or apathetic indifference toward King Corp's overreaches of authority when used by the authority. Whichever side wins this struggle gains the resistance token, which will be used in future struggles. So I will go ahead and take my turn at the beginning of this struggle. The principal is imposing an intimidating J. Rooney Strickland. But he begins by speaking softly to put you at ease. Please come in. Have a seat. It seems we have some matters of discipline to discuss. The principal does not sit and looks down upon you. You have such incredible potential, but it seems that you've fallen in with the wrong crowd. These friends of yours are leading you down the wrong path. Perhaps we need to take pains to separate you. And I will claim the number three. <clears throat> this All right, I will. Up. I will stand up. Um, roll the dice. Okay. Well, let me see. I'm going to first use. Um, I'm going to first use. Uh, Smart. No, you're first going to use the dice. Do you use the dice first, or do you yes. pick it first? That okay. Is super a rule. Yes, definitely. Super a rule. <laughs> Absolutely. You have to roll the dice before you even choose the conviction you're going to use. Because okay, you don't know how this is going to go. I mean, you kind of do because it's a first roll. Like, so that's a lose. four. There you go. Okay. Uh, go ahead, so then. I'm going to use. Um, I think. I think overconfident is probably best. So. Um, Mr. Strickland, or should I say J.R. Strick? Yes, my family and I saw you playing in your little cover band on Friday night. By the way, that cover of By the Rivers of Babylon was probably the least inspirational thing I have ever heard in my entire life. But I guess that you probably need the extra money working a side job. Some of us don't need that. JR, could it be that 
maybe you should just back off and let kids be kids so that some of our more important parents don't get upset. More right. important he, parents. Ow. Jay Rody Strickland uh, is is taken aback by your familiar and confident <laughs> manner initially, and seems genuinely stricken with your assessment of his performance in a cover band before regaining his composure and looks a bit angry. He hardens his appearance as he looks down upon you and uh, responds to this children being children. No, this matter is serious enough that I might consider expulsion as a punishment. It is very serious. And it, I want you to take it seriously as well. And I claim the number five. I'll stand. Roll the dice. All right. Oh, this is always the scary part mm. of every oh, yeah. game I've ever played. Oh, oh yeah, it's my favorite number. We're going to win this, y'all. Okay. Mm. <laughs> um, <laughs> 11. We got this. <laughs> we got this. I'm not scared anymore. Um, okay. I want to use... So, so I have medical skills, and one of the things I can do with my medical skills is to identify someone's weakness. How would I go about... I can just make up how that works. Yeah, you're, oh, it's amazing. your conviction. You make it up. So amazing, amazing. Tell me. Amazing. Uh, you help coming up with ideas. Yeah. You can workshop yeah, that. Yeah, no. But, um, unless you're asking that, it's up to you. Uh, speaking of uh, rule breaking, uh, uh, Mr. Sick. I mean, Strick. Um, uh, I notice your your eyes seem a little. Uh, Pink, um, and a little uh, hazed out, uh, and I, hmm, it's a, it's a nice whiff in here. Uh, I would, uh, I would recognize the smell of cannabis literally anywhere, um, because that was what, uh, the air of my room smelled like growing up in the one bedroom apartment with my druggy parents. Um, and, uh, so I think that you should lean into that and just chill um, and um, just let us off with a warning um, because we wouldn't want everyone to know um, what Mr. Strick actually partakes in, in his office. Right. Uh, taking it back again, but that's such a direct personal assessment or an attack on him. Um, uh, Jay his high timed, we call it quits. Yeah. Uh, sputters and says i'm nothing like your pathetic criminal parents kinku corp cannabis is corporate approved for adults and has none of the drawbacks of the sort of junky material that you and your family are known for but i'm not surprised you would recognize a, a <laughs> some, some sign of something but your actions possibly constitute a crime though this may be a matter for the law jacks as, as i claim the number 10. <laughs> I'm, I'm jumping in. No, no, we're, I'm standing up. Okay, we we got absolute we gotta. nards on these mm. kids. Oh my god! Okay, here we go. <laughs> Sweet, that's Ooh. the one I wanted. Seven. All right, we are going to use conviction. A, a conviction. We're going to use cool, and I am going to be like. First of all, it's very a. I, I understand as the adult, you have the right to do whatever you want to do uh, in your own personal home. By the way, I saw your show. That was pretty good. That uh, remix you did with uh, uh, of that song, um, um, How You Take It, it was really ins not only inspiring, but I almost picked up a guitar because of you. All right. Uh, so yeah, he sort of uh, he seems to be uh, more but getting him on your side, a bit, just um, calming, <laughs> calming down, you. and uh, side eye. What do you? Seems do? like you're getting him more on, on your side, and then he just sort of takes a moment and thinks and shakes his head. And so, yes, what, what's what's happened here, though? Your your parents are going to be so disappointed. I suppose I should give them a call now. And I claim the number eight. All right, it's my turn. All right, roll the dice, Panda. Mm. 
I told you, literally nothing better could have happened. Oh, we can end the stream man. here. Uh, 100% mean... funded Kickstarter. <laughs> so with the combination of the medical skills, conviction, use, and whatever... <laughs> Whatever chicanery Panda's going to throw out of the mix, go ahead and Sarah, tell me how you win your hope of humiliating the principal. So I think because of the dick pics that you posted. So I've been I've been sitting back in the chair and I I smell the weed, right? And I'm like, yeah, okay, this is the course of action I'm going to take. That's what I'm thinking in my head. So I'm going to sit back there until uh and and just kind of stare him down until he gets bored enough to take a seat because he's trying to intimidate me and it's just not going to work. And as he finally like leans back on the desk, uh, I go, um, so here's the thing. Uh, I'm sure we're going to work out a solution because if I don't uh, stop a scheduled post and release in the next five minutes, um, I found that blog post of yours. Uh, condemning and uh, complaining about uh, your bosses at Kingu Corp. Uh, so, you know, I can release that to the world and and, and see uh, if they demonetize you because that's their usual action for such uh, uh, treason against Kingu Corp. Um, and uh, I can um, stop that post as soon as we're satisfied with the re resolution here. And if we're not satisfied with that resolution and you want to push me further, then we can talk about your porn stash. <laughs> Sit down, JR. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So JR basically acts like puts on a front of just like not believing you. People aren't going to believe whatever you post. You're just a dumb kid. You, you're, you, you're in so much trouble and pushes the point uh, to where you get some posts out. And Three, yeah, maybe two, one ding 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 like the, the yeah, phone lights up, up. <laughs> and suspended he says and uh yeah then later the, the 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 posts start going out and well yeah maybe the kingu corp bosses might not buy it and some of the like teachers and adults probably uh probably think there's a fairly good chance this has more to do with uh you know a, a kid's prank than you know actual behavior by the principal especially since that's you know not the since uh, King Corp makes the official statement about the uh, uh, the uh, problems with the, uh, the 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 all of the breaching attempts that are going on at the school, uh, it's a huge hit with the kids and the principal is just always laughed at wherever he goes throughout the school. Uh, sometimes even the teachers laugh at him. Five more minutes till the porn's released. Mm -hmm. Oh no! It gets released. Oh so. yeah! <laughs> like, you get to release all the things. Like, Yay! You, you, you don't you don't get the thing of like not getting punished. That wasn't your hope. Your hope was to humiliate the principal. Well, so well, yeah. you get in trouble, but yeah, you're you you got to humiliate yeah. the principal. Oh, yeah, I'm fine. No one cares. Uh, yeah, I think we're we're good. At home. <laughs> well, let me Cliche, let me let me. Buddy. <laughs> Let me tally okay. off another uh, win for the youthful offenders here. <laughs> yes, the youthful offenders are two, two to zero. Ah, oh, brilliant. Uh, however, because um, okay, let's uh, move on to the reflection. Instead of asking reflection questions like before, at the end of this scene, uh, we will bring up the episode question. Uh, the episode question is the big question that will be answered by the end of the episode and is a very useful source of inf inspiration for coming up with ideas. If you ever have trouble thinking of what to say or do, I don't think that's an issue with this group, <laughs> think about the episode question. In future episodes, your cell will make up and define the episode question together. For this first episode, the question is, will Kingu Corp have widespread local support for its actions or will the, or will the community begin to oppose it? Uh, that is the reflection phase. No well, we'll answer that. To, 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 we'll see who wins, right? Mm. You know, I'm beginning to think that we just might have a shot 
at rallying the community against these fascists. Woohoo! And with that, uh, I think we'll go into our next break. Uh, but we want to check in about the Kickstarter first. Yeah, let me let me go click refresh over here. Did get a little bump. Ooh, oh, a yeah, two bumps. more, two more people. Hey, we're at eighty backers, and we're at five thousand one hundred eighty-five dollars. Thank you guys so so much. Uh, if you're enjoying what you're seeing, um, you know, please please pledge, um, back us, please. Uh, um, up your pledge if you've already <laughs> pledged. Um, take your if you're coming to, to Origins Game Fair or Gen Con, you know, bring your books. We'll sign them for you uh, if we have them ready. Oh, by yeah. Time, I'm not sure if we will. Um, we'll sign December is the you. official release for it, so you know that's going to be a little hard. That for, said, there are for some Origins, maybe, maybe Gen Con. Bring something yeah, we, else. We'll we sign have. It for you. We have some of the. We actually have some of the um, uh, inventory of misspent youth books. So yeah, we have the Ooh. misspent youth, uh, the yeah, original one misspent ones. youth, and sell out with me. So if you do want to find us, I feel weird about signing those because I haven't been involved in writing them. But yeah, I'll sign whatever you stick in front Listen, of me. Like, maybe we'll get and you two can blackmail the principal. That's all. We'll get... That's all you <laughs> <know>. <laughs> maybe we can get a stamp of Robert his signature and just stamp it on books <laughs> i'm pretty sure that might be illegal. all right <laughs> well, I mean, is I it clearly... really maybe well, if he makes it then it is legal right no. i don't know right. well <laughs> we'll be back gonna... to discuss more <laughs> ethics and law after this break <laughs> hey everyone uh opti's magic fingers here um that was uncomfortable to say. Uh, I need to go brush my teeth. Uh, but <laughs> I don't know what that means at all. <laughs> I... I'm just uncomfortable. Uh, we're Either. back with our terrible 14 year old boy sense of humor. <laughs> Lead us into the next scene. <laughs> Think about Richard Nixon. All right. All right. It's a new scene. It's scene three. We're winning it is the narrative theme of this scene and uh we start as we with every scene with a friendship question i mean that remains to be seen actually but oh you know. sad so uh, we're up to and we have the the magic token right no no the authority has the resistance token because oh because we won that's gross yeah, yeah. rude the rude token rude or wait, did I get, get it backwards? I wrote the rule, but maybe I missed it up. Just a sec. Isn't in the first, uh, in scene two or three, that it gets placed on a number and someone claims it? Okay, whichever side wins, it gets the resistance token. You're right, you're right. So Woo! you get it. I'm sorry, oh, man. Uh, who knows this game best? Chop, chop, chop. <laughs> no flip. Oh no! As All you right. can see, um, Rem has woken up and is ready to go today. Maybe I should change that rule. <laughs> Second because wind. If you lose the struggle, you get the resistance token. Hmm. I used my bonus action. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Take it. Take the damn resistance token. Like, like well, don't we it. place it somewhere? Nope. You just have it for now. Oh, okay. We'll talk about it later when the struggle comes up. So, uh, things have been kind of rough for the Uyos. They, uh, they have been punished for their behavior at school, but, uh, you know, tough times do have a way of bringing people together, and you got your shots in on Strickland. Uh, so it's time to realize that things aren't all doom and gloom and discover that you might even have an advantage over those Kingu Corp tools. So, setting the scene. Uh, this scene starts in a different setting depending on which exploit the authority chose. So it's a breacher collective. So... Uh, this scene is going to open up access to the computer hackers and some sweet tech. Uh, but also, an important part of Misspent Youth is that the youthful offenders get to set the scene, not the authority. So far, I've included text to set the scene for you, but that was just to ease you into things. This scene provides some guidance about what you're going into, but the details must come from the youthful offenders. So, instead of reading something off this time, the Wyos make up the setting. Otherwise, I'll get to describe where they are, what they're doing, maybe what time of day or what the weather is like. Uh, however, I'm getting ahead of myself. We need to, uh, to do a friendship question. 
Uh, and while so. we're transitioning to that, I just want to say that, hey, Opti, we're number seven on Kick Track. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> I, haven't checked, I haven't checked Kick Track <laughs> for a couple hours, so now I got, you've reminded me of my obsession. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Oh no, we just we just weaned them off. Oh. Fifteen D nine thousand is our is our expected goal if we continue to raise the exact same amount of funds every single day of this Kickstarter. Which as we all know is terribly likely. So Meanwhile, I'm I'm buzzed. I tangented us, I will do the friendship question. <laughs> uh all right, so um Hey, Char, instead of checking kick track, why don't you tell me a secret that you will, what is a secret that you would never be able to tell me? I, <laughs> oh, wow, you stepped in it. Um, uh -oh. Char will probably never tell you how she believes that her magic is due to some sort of evil entity uh, inhabiting her after an experiment gone wrong. Now, you don't know that, right, Cliff? That's just a that's just a that's just hanging sure. out there yep. in the wind, just right? Hanging out there in the background for you to yeah. pull from. Yep. Okay. But Woo. I'll help you. <laughs> All right, uh, so with that, uh, the YOs get to make up the setting with the idea that this is the scene where you get to get access to or come into contact and then make use of the Breacher Collective exploit. So uh, you describe where you are, what you're doing, what time of day it is, what the weather's like, but make the description quick and get into the action. In the first five seconds of the scene, you're talking about the trouble you're about to get into or... Use the exploit as a source of inspiration. This scene is all about how you get an advantage on the authority, whether you win or lose, actually. So take it away. Um, Who wants to go? Can we hang out at Char's house? Because Char has like really nice computers. Snacks. <laughs> Priorities. <laughs> fine, yeah. fine. As long as we don't get past like nine o'clock, I gotta get back home. But I I'm down. Why are you like this? <laughs> like what? Like this. I, I gotta be home. Three I gotta do this. Different bags right. of those like Frito Lay's chips, and uh, and then crash onto the large couch that's got the cup holders and like you can you can recline. It's got the little seats you can recline. Yeah, I just take up all of that that I can. Yeah, it's this giant fancy lounge with an oversized, mm -hmm. really huge uh, uh, TV or trid set. You know, it, it looks like a giant TV screen, but actually like projects out in three dimensions from the wall. I, They're I, super expensive. I eat uh, fruit by the foot so that I can just keep like taking little bits into my mouth and, and keep my hands free for, uh, so I just like, it looks like a long tongue. <laughs> <laughs> keep playing on the computers i don't <laughs> and then i oh go ahead uh so we know where we are what do we want to do next to screw with the authority i figured um since strickland is a we need new management, is what I'm thinking. Yeah. And so... Or none. Maybe new management. And so maybe <laughs> if you wanted to, Panda, you can dig up some more dirt on Strickland. Are you and maybe to pack on Strickland? Not at school. I need you to have to to to. I just go back to my food and start eating stuff. 
I just go back to my food. I brought this time like- uh, some sushi, some nice little sushi rolls, and and <laughs> hey, a flavored water <laughs> this time like- in a in a cup. Yeah, what you're happens learning. If like- I like it. What happens if we're like successful of like kicking out Strix, but like then someone worse comes? Is there like maybe a different thing that we could do? Someone we... worse than Strickland? You gotta plant something. I mean, there's always someone exactly. worse, right? Exactly. We can find probably, well, not we, Panda, this is your like rural house. Uh, you can probably find somebody who is less strict than we like, I right? That, I think um, that, like, uh, Tim, the, the, the janitor, he probably would be a Not good Tim. fit. He, like, we probably can use a raise. And... We can give him a raise, though. We can give him a raise. So, like, I think I'm going to just interject here with introducing the exploit, which becomes available to the YOs. Uh, so, Panda, you've probably been trying to get into all these, like, uh, breacher groups and things, but as an amateur, haven't really, haven't really made a name for yourself enough. But it seems like your recent exploits have uh, gotten the attention of the uh, the local breacher collective, and they've reached out to you with an invitation to join them. I respond, "Oh hi!" Like the H A I. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, you do. Guys, guys, I just got invited into the breacher collective. What's the What's cool that? like hacker name, whatever, for the Breacher Collective? Like, what what are they called? Like, you know, a classic, real life example of a hacker group would be like Masters of Destruction. Um, uh, um, but you can name name it however you like. Hmm. Like the, uh, we got from the chat the, the Void. I am <laughs> down with the Void. The Void sounds cool. <laughs> the O and I are zero and one though. Right. We are <laughs> hackers. Dun 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 dun. dun, dun. <laughs> yeah. All right. So the the void it is. Welcome, Schrodinger's sign. I. Um. All right. So so the void. Uh, reach out to me, and they want me to join up. So I've probably got resources now. Anything I can't get into, I can probably find. So they'll help. Woo! Yeah, I'm sure That's when you're logged brilliant. in, like there's all sorts of illegal hacker software tools you can just download and realize you could probably rally hackers to do stuff for you if you wanted help. Or as I as I see all all of this go, uh, I I lean over to Truce and go, I'm gonna need a whole box of fruit by the foot. Yeah, I mean that sounds really good. So yeah, okay. yeah, I think I think we need that. Uh, hey. Make the janitor, uh, I'm not going to feed you. I'm not going to. And then just sighs and starts unrolling. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, but if you tell anybody, I will punch you. <laughs> I don't like your punches, so okay. Okay. All right, so. Okay, make the janitor principal. Because he'd be cool. Awesome. Can don't tell Chase. Chase. Uh, I, I I think his last name is Mender Cage. Yeah, yeah, Tim Mender Cage. Yeah, yeah, he's the best. Tim Mender Cage. All right, so I'm gonna start trying to uh, promote him, uh, or or put him in the running up, like a high on the list with his credentials and get stuff him on like the list that, of so that when we get rid interviews, of Strickland, he's 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 like the VP place. gets to step in. Yeah, yeah. All right, so I think we'll start the struggle then using your contacts at the with the void and uh, your own uh, uh, breacher skills with newly acquired illicit software to, to hack things and set them up just how you want. Uh, that's when uh, you hear the sound of the garage door closing as uh, apparently, um, oh, I should... Uh, we're going into the struggle here, but but yeah, it sounds like uh, someone has arrived. It might be uh, Char's parents, though. They're not supposed to be home for hours yet. They work for the so, corp. Ooh. Yeah, so uh, we're going into the third struggle. We'll put out the uh, struggle sheet uh, clear to the tokens. You have the resistance token. So 
you can use that token to re-roll the dice. But if you use it, you have to give it to me. Mm -hmm. uh, I can then use it to make you re-roll the dice, but it can only be used like once per dice roll. So like, we can't just back and forth in an endless loop on one dice roll. Um, that, that's how it works. Um, pretty simple. Cool. Um, we have the round robin and violence is ugly. Uh, no other special rules. So uh, yeah, it does appear like uh, glancing over uh, through the window or uh, on the uh, security monitors or something. Uh, Char, you're able to see it. It does seem that your parents are home and it looks like there are a couple of other, uh, some higher end Kingu Corp muckety mucks getting out along with them. Uh, looks like they have dinner guests, and uh, this room is a bit of a mess. And also, you're doing illegal hacking here. So I will claim the number four. I'll, I'll stand and, up. And uh, go for it. So, yeah, unless anybody else want to. Then I will stand up. Uh, let me roll. Roll the dice. A nine. Not bad. Cool, cool. And I'm gonna say, I'm just gonna, I'm using cool. We're like, all right, Char. Where do you have like a upper, like a attic or something that we can get out like a window or something that's upstairs? Yeah, yeah. Follow me. And so I'm going to calmly say, uh, rope the world up, uh, uh, take the chips, uh, uh, let's go. And I kind of, what I want to kind of when I'm walking away, I kind of want to blow a little bit of wind to get the chips from not being on the couch, but be like away. You could have said that literally any other way. Any other way, because I was picturing you farting something away. <laughs> I'm so confused. <laughs> But yeah, that's that's my cool. <laughs> All right, so Not yeah, cool. you managed to like grab a few things and kind of run upstairs, leaving behind uh, still a fairly atrocious mess in the den. Uh, but uh, you get up there before uh, before Char's parents get in the door, and you get up to the window, and the ominous do for my thing. It seems like the window has actually been replaced. It's not the same window system you're used to. Your parents are always doing like different new upgrades to the houses with their new money. And um, yeah, this has some sort of a big fancy new window with uh, some sort of electronic locking system and you don't see a way to open it. I will claim the number eight. Oh, uh, nuts. I'm getting ahead of myself again. We need to declare hope and objective. Oh, we just oh yeah, that's like, important. Yes, escape. right? I get ahead of myself. So uh, you choose one uh, amongst these. So uh, mess up or destroy the high school's record systems of grades and disciplinary records. Rally the people in your community against Kingu Corp in a big way. Cause Kingu Corp to have a public relations scandal on their hands. Or to face, vandalize, or sabotage important and expensive Kingu Corp property. I think it sounds like we're trying to do the third one because we're trying to, to get the the uh, current principal out. Um, so we can kind of turn that into a scandal, um, but we're also trying to replace no, the principal. I mean, it sounds like you've defined yeah. yours fairly clearly. Yeah. Anyway, we don't have to use one of these. If your goal is to out the old principal and stick this new person in there uh, <laughs> yeah. using your, the breacher skills, I think that's a totally valid objective. Cool. I awesome. just want to point out to everyone, though, that we're only in scene three, and this is likely to create a supervillain. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's have fun. Ha <laughs> ha. With that, uh, yeah, the authority's objective is to uh, whatever you're doing, uh, you're gonna look like a really villainous bad guy people, not not public heroes or something. You're gonna look like. The people ever going to look down as dangerous and that needs to be stopped, right? So you'll just not to the people that matter, though. Will we'll we be look like we even are, to some people that matter? Will we look like we are misspending our youth? You totally will. Well, <laughs> it's not in a good really way. Really <laughs> nice being here with you all. <laughs> all right, so. Yeah, I had claimed my number. The window was locked. There's no easy escape from here. 
Uh, and I will also add that you can hear some sort of excl muffled exclamation uh, downstairs. Apparently, uh, you know, Char's parents have discovered the, the mess we left behind. I will step up. Roll the dice. All right. That's a six. Okay. Um, I'm going to use uh, pretty. Um, and I'm going to go downstairs um, and say, oh, no, I was just getting ready to clean up. Uh, we had some snacks and it just got a little uh, crazy, but, um, and you know, like pats at her bob um, and, it, and, and says, uh, but uh, I see that you have company. I can, if you want, I can, you know, help make dinner or host or keep them entertained while if there's any way I can help. Um, and, and my goal is just to keep them kind of distracted to buy more time for Panda. <laughs> Okay, yeah, you succeed at your goal. You definitely distract them, but they all sort of turn towards you and just all are all looking down on you, and they seem uh, rather put off and not happy to see you. And one of them speaks. You think it might be Char's mother. Uh, you've probably seen her before here and there, but not too often. Um, <clears throat> she says, who are you? And what are you doing in my house? <laughs> I'm number seven. Smile. <laughs> uh, I'll stand up. Did you hire her? As, as you're standing up. Oh uh, no! Or mother's asking her father. <laughs> Rude. Oosh. Uh, <laughs> um, all right. Rolling first. Fail, fail, fail. Hey. <laughs> what? No! Yes! Oh! I would like to re-roll that with the resource token, or the the. Of course, of course, you're gonna do that. I mean, why wouldn't you? Oh, oh. take that! Oh, my heart. My it's heart. mine now, though. Roll again. Oh. Yes! Yes! Zero. You and me. You and me. We just. We We're just a team. Are on We're the... a team. Yes. <laughs> Uh, oh man, that means you're gonna win the episode. At least I can make things more bad things happen to you, though. But go so, ahead and declare how you win. <laughs> so, uh, stupid winning uh, winner who ste steals <laughs> victory away from me using the token that I made up that I should have <laughs> given to myself. How <laughs> I'm dare making up I? different rules after this. How dare <laughs> I? All right, so. Um, Seeing that I'm like overhearing from downstairs uh, uh, that I'm being bought time, uh, I go ahead and kind of uh, bring in the Breacher Collective to help and say, all right, this is the mission. Um, we need to dig into this guy. And as we're pulling up files and stuff, we see that um, all of the funds that come through the new cafeteria that there is mandatory purchasing, he's embezzling that money that comes in. Um, so there's the fireable offense. Uh, and so we, we send the proof uh, up to the, um, the higher ups. And, and, and uh, Mender Cage is ready to step into the principal role uh, in terms of, of um, application and, and resume and all that stuff. It just occurred to me that you named him after Kinder Mage. I just now, that just now clicked. Um, but yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, you uh, get the hack through. Uh, um, the truce is able to keep the parents distracted and go, oh, one of, I think I think she's one of Char's friends. Uh, the husband answers. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm so sorry, dear. I didn't mean to be so rude. It's just. Uh, Char should do a better job of cleaning up after themselves. Uh, I agree. <laughs> where are they? Uh, uh, never mind. Uh, you offered to help. Uh, would you mind tidying up a bit? Uh, we'll take care of dinner. Uh, turns to the uh, business people. I'm very sorry. Why don't you go have a seat over there, uh, dear? Would you show? Would you show them the bar while I I start uh, uh, getting dinner ready? Oh, of course, dear. And so. All that's taken care of while you have plenty of time to do your hacking yeah. upstairs. I and... clean by eating the snacks that didn't get taken <laughs> upstairs. 
<laughs> I, I try right. really hard not to scream down the stairs. Uh, yeah, that Char's always leaving greasy handprints everywhere. <laughs> I close the door as quickly as you say something. <laughs> and like, we got Char. Do you know how we can open this door? Wait, never mind. Panda, you know how to break this, the make the, the lock is, is electronical. Can you hack the lock? Electronical. <laughs> <laughs> Computer smart brain. It's <laughs> <laughs> like got impossible. Go. We gotta call Wade. <laughs> yeah, and I imagine Panda's like, oh, what? Yeah, that's easy. Beep. Yep. Like, you're just like, nah, I'm doing way more. You're doing way more hard stuff than that. But <laughs> um, I, I time it well so that it you're looks ruining like someone's it, career it, and then hiring looks, uh, the principal, the next principal somehow. It looks like Who's it super unlatches not qualified. just as I fart and I go, yeah, I can airbend too. I hate it. And on that note, I will be like, oh, just hold on. And I'm going to air. My idea is to airbend us out. So I'm going to make like a vacuum that's going to be like a slide so we can just go on the air and it's and out the door where they're not um, outside. So we want her. So oh, you're cool. doing that for you and for Panda, right? Yes. Y'all too. Okay. Cause I figured they don't want, uh, we're, we're teenagers. I believe all of us. Yeah. Yeah. Boys in the house by themselves. Yep. Yeah, yeah. We got to dip. We're dipping. <laughs> right. 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 Yeah, Char will get a talking to later about leaving behind messes. And uh, I did. You did. Char's not worried about it. Yeah. We dipped. Uh -huh, we, we did. Yeah, but they're really not I... very strict with you, of course. You just, you know. It's well, really... my so, yeah, parents the overall are. goes really well. Let's do the reflection phase <laughs> so now. Sorry, so sorry, mummy. So sorry. Oh, mumsy. Uh, looking at page, uh, let's see which one. Page 20, there's a list of reflection questions, and we'll just go through it. Uh, everyone can ask one either of themselves or each other. Uh, who would like to start off with a reflection question? Let's start. Um, I will ask myself how I feel about what just happened because my parents seemed like oddly uncomfortable with me having friends over and also thinking that like everybody who doesn't look like them must be like hired help or something and that just makes me really uncomfortable and feel gross like grease stains in in my heart <laughs> grease stains in my heart a song by the heteroi <laughs> <laughs> exactly uh All right, uh, who's next? Um, I'll go. Uh, what has changed? Or actually, uh, what have you learned about your p beliefs and values? Um, I'm going to ask that to myself. Self. You didn't have to say it so forcefully. <laughs> it's that's I mean, part of the rules. You can do that. <laughs> yeah, self reflection is 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 definitely a good thing to engage in. So go ahead and self reflect. All right, self. Um, what do we feel about our beliefs and values? Um, what have we learned? Um, I think keeping the focus where it's like these these battles seem to be part of something bigger that keep going rather than just having oh there was something that happened in the cafeteria let's forget all about it like everything seems to be bouncing off of each other um and and impacting something on a bigger scale and so thinking about like the actions that we take affecting people on a bigger scale and and are we going to do the right thing by um by the people that we're trying to protect um so, so kind of reflecting more on that and yeah, the, the adrenaline is cool, but is what we're doing helping a bigger picture? Um, I mean, I would argue that uh, the answer is more dick pics. 
I thought you were going deep, somewhere. Deep reflection. Well, is this I, what we want? I, <laughs> Definitely uh, dick pics. <laughs> all right. So let's big journey. Well, hold myself into a false sense of security. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> you can yes, reflect. This is the moral you. thing to do. I have your heart. <laughs> I hate it here. <laughs> uh, um, I, I want to ask, uh, I want to ask Jace. Um, Jason, what do you want to do next? In the short term, Jace wants to reevaluate his life choices <laughs> on the <laughs> on the <laughs> larger uh -huh, on on the larger scale. Um, I want to look at I'm going to start looking at other way because like Jace doesn't like the fact that we're doing a doing a janitor to run the school like he sees like uh, this will be like a horrible idea because he has no qualifications for it it's a really nice janitor no qualifications for it so what he thinks would be he I guess he is going to look at I he doesn't know. He, that's what he's doing. He doing next he's gonna to try to get keep them not in more trouble. That's what he's doing next. What he, you want to do is keep the new principal from being in over his head. Yes. Okay. I, I basically if be completely honest he he wants to be semi prince send by a new principal to help him out. Like he's gonna be the voice in his ear, so he won't do anything oh, bad. Oh, you want to be the authority? Yeah, I get it. Yeah, because <laughs> I can't. Because he he is going to no, no uh, jan like he nothing wrong with being janitor. Look, they, I'm not saying bad about that. I'm saying he is not a principal. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he is now. He is yeah, technically. He, yes. Yeah, no, He's no, 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 no. Principal than you yeah. are. <laughs> we'll see by the end of this episode, aren't we? <laughs> so one more question, I think. Yeah, I. I was actually going to do one for truce. Uh, what has changed about what do you think about the authority? I think growing up, uh, both with her parents and then in this foster family like i don't think truce has ever seen the authority show up so tangibly in her home um and i think she's she's recognizing on a different level how intrusive and just everywhere the authority is not just because uh shar's parents that they work for the authority but then there's like the authority goons coming in as well um yeah i think that's that's a lot to think about for her all right let's move on to scene four we're losing and now i guess since things have gone so well for you, you can be pretty confident of actually carrying a victory for the episode but you know uh winning but... doesn't always mean winning everything in it uh we'll, we'll see how it goes down uh but uh we'll start off with a friendship question any one of you can ask one, though preferably not Sarah, because she just went. I, I mean, I can, I guess. Yeah, friendship question. Question about friendships. <laughs> yes. Ch Char, <laughs> why do you trust my judgment? Answer, I don't. <laughs> 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 that is a valid response too. That's yeah. valid. Yeah, that's valid. <laughs> but it's uh, Char that has to answer. <laughs> yes. Let's see. Uh, I trust your judgment because you have some clearly some sort of magical ability like I do and you you basically, this will be very condescending. You don't, <laughs> you don't know how to lie very well. <laughs> so 
I was inclined to pay attention to you because I saw your magical ability, and then I realized that you just are sort of naive and always tell the truth because you don't know any better. <laughs> I love it. All right, so that, that done, we're going to go into scene four. Uh, just when it seems like you're winning and Kinko Corp won't get away with their authoritarian takeover, they hit back hard. So um, basically, just... you're going to set the scene. Uh, it's going to, I was going to suggest that uh, perhaps uh, maybe you're uh, celebrating your victory, but it's up to you uh, to decide uh, what and where the youthful offenders are up to and what you're doing in the wake of your, uh, of your coup, having seen uh, Strickland get fired in disgrace uh, and, the, and uh, an unexpected principal being restored in his place. Um, and, and while we're thinking about that, we are at $5,395 with 84 backers. Nice. Aww, Four yeah. more backers since we last checked on it. Thank you. Thank you, mm -hmm. everyone. Yeah. Exciting. You're super awesome. You're making today 84 backers better than it would be otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so go ahead and set the scene. <laughs> uh, quantifier. <laughs> where where you are, what you're doing, and then uh, go ahead and jump in and start playing. I think. Um, let's see the ten. I think we we do we ha do we go to the hacker collective, and start laying out a plan. Does that sound cool? Sorry, do we pick a so, hope? Uh, no, this is a uh, this is just for okay. the uh, setting the scene. We Got it. Okay. Trouble yet. Okay. Cool. A, a plan for what? What do we want them to help us do? Well, I figured if going off that. Uh, though a panda is good, they'll probably do it in a quicker fashion. So, like, I feel like pandas set the groundwork to make it work. And then with a little help, because you're new at this, we can all together do it. That's, that's I, didn't, so I didn't say that. Today. I, did, I didn't say it to you, though. I didn't say it to I didn't say it. I was just saying it. That's my actor. Well, that would be my guess while we're there. Yeah, I, I think uh, one of the, the things, knowing the, the game, that at the end of an episode, if we win, we get to dismantle a system of control uh, if we choose to. Um, or authority figure. Or authority figure. I feel like we're setting up to, um, to destroy the school as a system of control. Uh, so like like Shay said, we, we put him, we put the janitor in, um, this position, I mean, like, we could theoretically expose that and, like, show what a joke Kingu Corp is and make them be like, ah, school management is not Oh, us. we can't do that to Tim. Well, that's just an example. Um, but I think, like, if we can discredit and make this a non-profitable or, or disreputable uh, operation from them and make them pull back, then they have one less system of control. Planning is all well and good, but first let's set the scene. Where are you and what are you doing? Yeah, I, I think we'd probably be celebrating with the Hacker Collective. All right, right. You're hanging out. Uh, where are you meeting? Is it like a funky warehouse somewhere or a kebab place or a... Uh, uh, Anybody want shawarma? <laughs> <laughs> what, yeah, so... what if it's like, what if it's like a, a, a community pool? Oh like, no! Like the weirdest place. We all like, just went swimming right? together. And like, I'm like, down with it. I'm just just go with it. I am. I'm okay. There's like, there's like a there's like a unisex bathroom that has like a out of order sign on it, and like they're all like set up in there. We hang out and smoke weed in there. <laughs> See, <laughs> hold on. That's such the I love it. That's the weirdest place. We're meeting at the public pool. Yeah. Yeah. 
where me at the public <laughs> like, pool. I know where the hacker collective are. They're at the abandoned, or they're at the public pool. Like, nobody's gonna All like, right. That makes sense, yeah. So yeah, you're, you're just celebrating, just kind of discussing, you know, what to do next and how this is going. It just feels good, right? You did something, you changed the world, make it a better place. Who knows what else you might be able to do? Oh, maybe I can pass calculus. You're, you know, you're going to pass calculus. Now I made you with that. We'll we're going to, we're going to positive vibes. You're right. We you got are. This. Let's change everyone's grades. Stop it. Stop. <laughs> mm, ah, that's we're not what to I discredit Kingu Corp. Why not? That is not a bad point. Well, if everyone passes, something has gone wrong according to the system. I hate that. That's a good idea. <laughs> For those that couldn't afford it otherwise because they're 4.0 averages now? If you say no to that, you're a bad person. It's true. Ty, what do you think? What do you think about this plan? I... I... The, the, the king is probably so arrogant as to think that if everybody gets good grades that they're doing a good job. Mm. So let's mm. flunk everybody. Yeah, but what if what if then everybody gets punished? Parents will get upset if oh. the parents can no longer support this. Mm -hmm. That's true. Char, if you came home and had failed all of your classes, your parents would throw a massive fit. Yes. Yes, they would. Oh. Oh, that's good. But here's the thing about that. I don't want to mess with my GPA. So could we do good. like? Let's do it. <laughs> could we? Could we like maybe give everybody C's? No, that messed up my GPA too. Why can't we do the everybody can say's? Because we just went through this. Now you're either in or it's happening to you. Like you can you can do this with us or it can happen to you. Like those are. I want to give you options. Those are your that, options. That, that, that's not options. That's that's those are not literally options. One, two options. I'm it's, passing it's... calculus for sure. I mean, I'm failing calculus, but only because we're gonna change the grades to fail. <sighs> what about? I mean, what about changing yeah, I mean... SAT and ACT scores? Instead of the grades. I haven't took those yet. Yes, we should do that. <laughs> so, <laughs> also, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's do it. All right. As you're talking, uh, one of the uh, uh, breachers in the breacher collective says, "Oh shit! Uh, shit! Oh shit! Uh, what? What happened? Uh, they locked me down. I think I've been traced." Another one says, oh, "Shit! Me too! What the?" And then another one's uh, cyber kitchen says, Push, and the sparks and they fall over as they're having a seizure right there in front of you. Oh, oh no! Uh, oh, at no. that, uh, at that. Point. Yeah, it seems like uh, Panda, you you check over yours, and it looks like uh, we're gonna we're gonna go into the struggle. But it looks like yeah, it looks like you've got about a half dozen different uh, tracers holding it in your position. And you're the split second away from getting traced yourself. I, I so I want to I want to. This isn't me standing up, but mm -hmm. I just want to respond to it before we do any actions and have it like reverse engineer the audio back to where it's coming from, saying. I see you. No. <laughs> Panda's not that cool. <laughs> yes, I am. Yes, I am. Right. I'm going to stand up. Oh, hold on. OK. We haven't got to that part. We have to do the, oh, yeah. the, the objective. So um, <laughs> yes, I am. let's see here. Uh, I'm actually departing a bit from the, uh, the text here. And we're going to go in a little bit of a different direction. And that's our oh. prerogative. Um, instead of going with the heavy demonetization campaign that is presented in the text, I'm going to invoke something else. Uh, mm. The Lawjack Captain. Uh, the uh, the Lawjack uh, the Lawjacks have employed some uh, anti-breaching Lawjacks in order to counter the recent influence of hackers, and it seems like they've traced your position. And uh, yeah, when you do, you're like, ah, I see you. The, you look at a panda, and it's a big official logic. You have been traced. Remain where you are. You are under arrest. Do not resist. I start by claiming the numbers five and nine. Oh. 
Oh, I forgot you could do All that. Right. Scary. Uh, oh, that. So oh. my objective. My objective. Again, I'm getting ahead of myself. My objective is that I will. Um, that at least someone of your group is actually going to get arrested and openly implicated in breacher crimes. Uh, this might even undo some of the stuff you did with the hacking if it gets revealed. Oh, no. So, yeah, five and nine, that, that's going to be mine. Um, your hope? Uh, I think the first one makes sense. Well, that I... their demonetization campaign is perceived as cruel and unjust. With image, like... If they if they like go crazy, trying to stop us, right? And they ended up like doing more damage or like, you know, I don't know. If that makes sense to me. Okay, yeah, you generally have good student opinion, but you're trying to sway the public mm -hmm. opinion more. Uh, it's the public pool against but... Kingu Corp. Yep. So, all right. So special rules. We have the round robin and violence is ugly as always. Uh, there is the resistance token. It works just the same way as before, uh, except it's in my hands now, and I can use it to force you to reroll the dice. But if I do, I have to give it to you, which also kind of, I guess it kind of works in your favor. But I honestly uh, feel like the stakes got way up when you took two spaces. I knew you were going to do it, but it still, it just did something to me. <laughs> nice. So, uh, All right, who's still I'm going to stand up. Go for it. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't taken the, the charge yet, so... I am going to, uh, well, I'll roll first, You're right? You're going to roll, yeah. I am going to roll By first. the way, Cliff, we posted the uh, the playtest, and uh, someone's already asked for a shut up and roll t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you I gotta push... switch the R. And, you got to switch the R and the slash. Oh. Yep, yep. There we go. Dang. Six. All right. Go ahead and take your six and do your thing. And Char will um, approach the middle of the room and do some sort of like, and then everybody in the bathroom turns invisible. <gasps> what? Amazing. Neato. Which I think is the first time that she's or that they've used their powers in front of most of you, if not all of you. I, uh, oh, I've just, seen it for sure. But... Just in time, <laughs> yeah, is this uh, in, this uh, quite prominent display of magical power makes you all invisible. Uh, one of the breaches responds, oh, sweet. Uh, you can hack the world. <laughs> <laughs> That's <would> reality <laughs> breaching. Uh, and then you hear uh, there's the sounds of uh, jackboots as lawjacks have actually entered the public pool area and are moving about. Even though you're invisible, it might be difficult uh, to not bump into them. They're heavily armored and armed with things like shotguns and the big old shock maces. I will claim the number seven. Even claiming the number seven cannot overcome the fact that we just hit 5,500. <laughs> With 86 backers, so thank you, everybody. Oh, yeah. Thank you. The authority may be terrifying, but our Kickstarter numbers aren't. <laughs> We're gonna kickstart <laughs> their ass. All right, I'm gonna jump oh. up just to stop this. Goodness gracious! <laughs> um, uh, Please do. Boop. Oh no! <laughs> yes. No! We no! lose. Wait. Yeah, I got the reroll token, was, so I'm gonna was, win. I'm gonna let. Shay go because I don't know. You said it first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got no, you beat no, me to no. it. You rolled the dice. You beat me to it. The you only could. thing you have left to stop okay. from losing is for you to sell out one of your convictions. Are you uh, willing to uh, let your uh, adherence to your values result in uh, the arrest of perhaps yourself or some of your friends? And have the bad things happen, or are you willing to betray your values and go too far in order to to get this victory and get your friends out of trouble? Not just get your friends out of trouble, also make King Goo Corp look bad. But oh, so here's the thing. Here's the, the thing. This is, is what I'm thinking about in my head. I feel like we could win this entire episode. I feel pretty good about that. 
but also I want personally to not have lost any of these scenes. <laughs> <laughs> Clean sweep. <laughs> so I, will I say, think I'm. I will say that it is costly, and we have five or we have four episodes left. So um, okay, okay, okay. I'm not saying don't. Okay. I'm saying think carefully. As long as you don't sell it more than one conviction per episode, it's a pretty decent pace, you know. But you know, it's up to you. Yeah, uh, you could just like take the overall victory and not not risk it and just let yeah, this bad thing happen. Yeah, I think I'm happen. gonna not. I think I'm gonna not risk it. Yeah. All right. So then I get to describe what happens and how this wraps up. Ah. I think it's good for us to see what happens when we so, don't, you know, dominate. So, Gross. so it's. <laughs> so it's mutual no. offenders three, authority one. Uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna take this victory and I'm gonna make you feel it because yeah, as you're all slipping away, uh kind of dodging in between things, uh uh let's see, uh Jace ultimately uh like trips and falls in some of the water, uh, slips, even though he's like the martial artist, you're just maybe maybe a bit too confident, it's just bad luck or something. You, you bump into one of the logics and they pick you up before you get a chance and the, the invisibility spell uh, apparently gets washed away with the water or maybe it gets broken because it picks <laughs> you up. You don't really know, but there you are. Everybody else gets away, but you are busted. Not only busted, but they toss you to the ground and they busted. kick you and hit you with their shock sticks and it hurts extra more because you're wet. Oh, no. And just beat and kick and pound you into unconsciousness as everybody else gets away and lets you take it and you're dragged into uh, custody. They did not smash his glasses. Oh. And, uh, yeah, there's a, there's, there's a few different, yeah, your glasses are smashed no! as well. There's, of course, yeah, it's, yeah, I get to win. No, of course, Shay, thanks for reminding back. me. What Shay. else, what else should, what else should I break? No, uh, I'm not telling. Okay. <laughs> so, so yeah, with that, uh, Jace ends up like in jail. His dad gets him out, like, but he's in total huge trouble, super grounded, and also severely beaten. Um, oh. And then also, the, yeah, just the the news about the Breacher Collective and somehow you're involved. It's a big story all over the news. Uh, your fall from grace as a uh, promising logic. I so bad right now. And all of the blame is on you. Just all of it. Like, you apparently were the one who got in touch with the Breacher Collective, and you're getting blamed for all of it. Fortunately, because of your connections, it doesn't mean you're going to prison or anything like someone else might, but you are utterly disgraced. And your your dad is, like, doesn't even talk to you. Um, it's just all this horrible bad. I'm going to take my win and make you... No. You, that, I, you might perfect. win this episode, but, but I'm if you just this. really, yeah. you really I, went for it. There, didn't I, I you? agree with it. I agree. I agree. With it. it hurts. I agree with it. Kip doesn't All like right. what you just did to Ruff. Shay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I think we can roll that into the last scene, unless you want to take another break. Uh, we're good. Let's roll. I'm good. We are yeah, oh, cool. we're at the fifty five hundred eighty six backers. Thank oh. you so much. Go so to the Kickstarter another, if you haven't. Another reflection time though. So let's go ahead and ask the reflection questions because yeah, that was a pretty big event. Your your first loss. <laughs> I had to pull out the big guns for I'm it, so but sorry. you know. It is <laughs> your fault. I know. Well, you should be, but you know. You could have made this not happen, but I you weren't know. willing. You're willing to let Jace take the hit instead of yourself. For principle. And uh, now I got yeah. to question whether principle is worth it. <laughs> so is that your question to yourself then? Yeah, I think, I think like, was it worth coming out feeling like I stuck to my principles knowing what happened to Jace? I think that I would say, I literally said before all of this went down, I was like, it's for the greater good, whatever. And now I'm like, oh, I, maybe it's not that black and white. Yeah, good one. Uh, Jace, how about you? Uh, I, I'm anxious to hear what your reflection is going to be on this. Golden boy. You know what? It's going to be what has changed about your view 
on the other YOs. Oh, no. Oh, shit. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> He's going to break my heart. <laughs> Give me a second. I got to word this. Okay. <laughs> it's going to be, because I figure <laughs> it will have to be Truce, because she rolled badly, that it makes sense that somehow Truce did something. That's why I'm, that's in my head canon. Okay, yeah, maybe that's or, why or not. No, no, that's not true. Well, let else. me give, it's up to give you. me a second. Give me a second. Okay. <laughs> He's playing the movie in his head. Yeah, I am. I really yeah, yeah. am. I, I knew you were enough a... to know that that's exactly what's happening. <laughs> Play the says, help me. And she says, no. Because <laughs> I feel like. Greater good. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be. So, truth, like, I was gone. I was hit. But oh, no, I, I y'all, y'all were visible. I could have gra grabbed you. Uh-huh. But all y'all was invisible, so that don't work. <laughs> that's God was gonna be like, True saw me and she left. Yeah. But y'all was invisible. I so I mean they right all now, saw you and left because I... they were still invisible. Yeah. Right. And that oh wait, do because it has to be one of the other, right? It can't be all of them, correct? Oh, uh it's up to you. Cool. Okay, it's gonna be all. So all y'all left me. And I'm like, I I didn't I I I I wanted look, I I did the I won the logical steps. We won to get union. Let's get that thing. I said, let's try talk it down. They <laughs> do dick pics and porn. I <laughs> wanted to just replace the person with somebody else. They wanted to do a janitor. They, <laughs> we meet in a pool. A, how do we meet in a pool when it's hackers? They use electronics. Why would you be near a pool? <laughs> like <laughs> And I'm just like, I'm like, these. I'm hanging out with children. These are legit children, and I'm 13. And so <laughs> like this. <laughs> so right now, I'm just. That's how I feel. I'm hanging out with a whole bunch of children. I'm hanging out. Aww. Some people are older than me, but they're children. They need. They need. They need. They need. They need. They need a parental. They need a parental figure. <laughs> darn it! And if I have to be the 13 year old parent, dang it, I will. <laughs> In fact, in fact, I love how yeah. each of us in canon has done something just absolutely against what you would have done. Take it in aggregate. It does sound bad. In fact, like it the does. next day, like bad. he's not even wearing glasses anymore. He's wearing like oh. he's going with this one. And yeah, yeah, that's how because the prescriptions. Oh. You got like says, an arm in a sling because probably oh. ended up with some broken bone uh -huh. or ribs or something. And I, I'm just, I'm just, I am livid. But the big thing is, I just think y'all kids, y'all, okay. y'all, <laughs> y'all some high schoolers. Give us the elemental cold shoulder. I yes. have, I, I, I would like to reflect on my view of the other YOs, um, uh -oh. particularly uh -oh. Jace. Um, oh. So I feel very bad about what happened to you, and I have that guilt of like my overconfidence in hacking. Um, drew these logics here and caused this. Um, that's like my guilt to bear. But at the same time, I'm also semi hopeful, not knowing that that Jace thinks all of this about us. I'm also semi hopeful that like he'll see what the authority does to people and stop trying to follow all the goddamn rules. Um, and clearly, that's not the case. <laughs> Conflict. <laughs> All right. Uh, what does Char have to reflect on here? Uh, wow, they did right some cool stuff, it. but uh, Char <laughs> it didn't help. Uh, it didn't help Golden Boy. Right. Um, I think Char is super confident in what they did and thinks that. Uh, if Golden Boy hadn't been an idiot and slipped, things would have been fine. So, <laughs> so, Sounds like try. <laughs> so she, uh, so they go shopping and um, and they get a a nice sort of um, turquoise, uh, uh, I don't know, turquoise thing that goes across their 
top of their body. Sash. Sash. Thank you. Uh, and uh, and then turns to um, we get the name right. Turns to Truce and says, uh, "What do you think of this color? Does it look good to me?" Why are, why are we shopping? Why did you take me shopping? Doesn't shopping makes everybody feel better? We can get something for Golden I'm going Boy to the food if you court. want. Okay. All right. Sounds like we're setting the scene for the fifth scene. Uh, before we jump into that, let's go ahead and acknowledge we're going into uh, the final scene. The score is 3 1 uh, in favor of the. Uh, that one hurt. So, yeah, let's see if I can make it hurt more uh, to win this episode uh, as we go into the fifth scene, which is who's winning? Uh, um, before we do anything else, let's do a friendship question. Who's got one? Who didn't I, ask one? I already know uh, that why uh, Golden Boy and I are drifting apart. <laughs> I don't need to ask that. <laughs> I mean, Golden Boy has kind of drifted apart from everybody at this point. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, he's having a bad time. All right, so. Well, I used a friendship question instead of a reflection question. My bad. Uh, that's fine. Um, you can use uh, any question as a reflection question, really. So uh, I think Billy Berserker here is asking one. Uh, let's do this. <laughs> of course. No, no uh, uh, that doesn't fit as a friendship question. Uh, uh, well, let's ask it anyway. Is um, Asha's character ask going to grow up and work for the authority? We don't know yet, but... Hmm. Chances are not so good now. But. Yeah, there's there's <laughs> more of a tip of a scale than it was before. Uh, uh, <laughs> so, Derek, what's your question? Yeah, um, my question is for who? Who would this have? Uh... I'm gonna I'm gonna ask. Take a real quick um, roll here. Okay, I'm going to ask uh, Jace, why did Truce, why did I um, tell you about how I really lost my parents? Because I just tell people that, like, my parents died in a car crash. Um, and you were like, a car crash? <laughs> a car crash killed Lily and James? No, I'm just kidding. Oh. Um, but I... <laughs> I told you I I tell everyone that my parents died in a car crash, but I told you that my parents actually were uh, junkies and they got carted off. Yeah, they're uh, still alive and in prison. And abandoned me. Yeah, they're <laughs> so, alive and in prison. They abandoned me. Um, I think, which actually sets up perfectly with everything else that's happened. Uh, it was like maybe like not the first day. Or like maybe a you know what no it was probably in like the summer going up to like uh school and you know I knew people like because of course I'm me and maybe there was like an outing like maybe a get ready to go to school party or whatever and I seen you like out of it and like texting and I look over and I was like. It was probably be friendly. It was like, hey, how you like? What's up? You, you doing good? You doing well? Uh, my name is my name is Jace. And I don't even name myself Golden Boy. I see. I feel like you are having it down. And then we do just like we had like a moment that you just maybe you wasn't maybe something that popped up on text that reminds you mm -hmm. of it or whatever. But you just yeah. had to, yeah yeah. So, so you kind of just said it, and I haven't really I haven't told anybody. Just obviously. right time. Mm -hmm. Right place, right time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's say yeah. maybe with you having the law check, uh, dad or whatever, maybe maybe you even knew the real reason. Yeah, she told you. Mm. We even go uh, more towards that than probably my dad probably was involved and I didn't realize it. Well, he said something. Yeah, I 
what if like you were in like a debate with someone else about how like like junkies belong in prison and like they they deserve everything whatever and then i finally get to the point where i'm like hey there's like collateral damage that happens with this um and i it was one of the few times that i've talked something out rather than just punching you in the face mostly because your a dad is a cop <laughs> uh-huh 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 but yeah i, I like that head cannon. We had a, so we had an argument about like we had a debate about it and then you brought that up during the debate. I like that. Cool, 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 cool. So I was for arresting uh, drug users and you were obviously yeah, yes. I got it. I got it. I'm here. I think, I think we're here. I think we're here. I'm writing in my notes. All right. Cool. So I think we'll go into the next. Uh... The, the last scene. Um, you can set the scene of uh, y'all shopping here, but I'm gonna I'm gonna bring in with a little bit more backstory of what's been going on. Uh, so it seemed like Jace is largely taking the blame, but uh, his Lawjack uh, father is sort of in denial about this and has been uh, doing what he can to pull some strings and connections at work and get investigations going and, and blame shed on different targets. So uh, as you set the scene and you're uh, doing some, trying to do some shopping, Char, you find that you are not able to access your funds. And when you start looking into things, you realize that your parents have been demonetized for connections to a breacher collective. Uh, through, uh, and it seems as you all are looking into things, this is something that is is going down, and a number of other demonetizations are happening of various people, either connected to you or connected to uh, some maybe uh, known or suspected breachers. Uh, so authority, uh, the Kingu Corp is hitting back hard, and there's some sort of real battle about to begin. So you uh, try to go shopping, uh, I guess as the authority, I shouldn't be getting this involved in setting the scene, but I felt like it. So I'll stop there. I like and let that. You take over. I like that. Okay. Mm. So, yeah, set the scene. And yeah, I'm a uh... dialogue to discuss what Kinga Corp did and has done, what this means for you and your community, maybe what lost, yeah. what scares you, or what makes you angry, comfort each other, uh, then get mad and uh, fight back and we'll get into the last struggle. Cool. Yeah, I don't know how you can shop right now. Um, so I'm going to leave you to check out. I'm going to go to the food court and just smell the food. That's just going to be the place that I go. But does the sash look bad? The, I mean, it's kind of tacky. Like, why do you need a sash? Sashes are in this I'm year. No, I'm going. No, I'm. I can't. Nobody understands me. <laughs> um, are you coming, Panda? Or are you staying? Uh, I look between the the sash master and you and go, food. You want food. one? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I think when you go to food court, you see Jace like beaten up, just eating like, um. Uh, Big sandwich by a company that makes big sandwiches. <laughs> it's called Big Sandwich. <laughs> Literally big called sand Big Sandwich. <laughs> big Sandwich. And like, I have fries. You can it's obviously see. <laughs> you can obviously see that there's like a whole bunch of greasy stuff on my thing. And I'm just, I am just smashed. There's no fork. Like, <laughs> I, I, oh, which is a complete 180. I, I ping you a, a video of a cute kitten. I, I completely ignore it right now. <laughs> Listen, we should probably go and maybe talk to, like, let's get, hey, Ch Char! <laughs> maybe we text Char and Char, I'm down. we should talk to him. Also, I think if we become friends again, he'll let me have a bite of that sandwich, because, like, obviously, he's not going to be able to finish it <laughs> by himself, so... Um, but like we, I'm, 
I'm going to apologize if you want to go get Char. Panda. Cool. But, um, do you want to do that alone, or do you want me there, or... I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna punch him. I'm just gonna apologize. Like, I don't even, you don't have to hold me back. Right, that wasn't, I'll get Char. <laughs> <laughs> was too much social interaction without being between us. I, I was, <laughs> I was done. <laughs> I, I walk up and I go, uh, hey, hey, uh, go golden boy. Yes, Trudy. Okay. Just going full government name. <laughs> all right. All right. Um, can I say it? Of course you can say it. It is a free country. You can say it. I mean, that's it... arguable. I mean, we're not going to get in a debate about what it means to be free. You can say here it. In this you, 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 okay. you can say it. You can say it. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm going to... Hey, look, I have been thinking a lot, and I just wanted to say I'm sorry because I realized that ultimately what happened was that I sacrificed you for the greater good, and honestly, I don't know if that was worth it. Like, I don't... No, I just don't... I'm sorry that this happened to you. And that I had a part in it. We need a plan. And I get it. Look, I get it. It was great. I it's not just you. I should have this conversation with other people. It you're it's Oh yeah, Char and Char and Panda are here. They're like actually on their way. They're over there. Okay, I, I'll, We're I'll, over here. I'll, I'll, just, I'll just I can wait. I can I can wait. Uh I look at you and look and staring at my food because obviously you are. Uh... <laughs> and I like cut my hot sandwich, big sandwich in half. Your big hot sandwich? <laughs> big hot sandwich. It has, it has jalapenos on it. Broken opti. <laughs> <laughs> you, I say literally nothing. I say nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> well, sandwich is total canon now in the. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's what it's called. It's called big hot big sandwich. sandwich. <laughs> so I got I got number two a hot big sandwich. Anyway, <laughs> I I uh, <laughs> I cut uh, half of it and pass it over to you. Hey, do you want some? I mean, yeah, and I like hold it up like I want to toast you with it, like. Clink. And I like toast you. I'm like, oh, you know what? Yes. Screw it. Boom. And I kind of just stuff myself with it. Like, I am stress eating. Like that's what <laughs> that is what's happening. <laughs> I don't care. I have I have stains on obviously a it's not even uniform. It is like a white shirt with <laughs> with grease stains on it and some really bad jeans, but they're my comfort jeans, and that's why I need comfort right now. And so I <laughs> feel like you looked into my soul. So... <laughs> <laughs> Charles yeah, that's... comes along as this big hot sandwich uh <laughs> reunion is taking place and sits right down next to Jace and then just slides over um a sort of medium-sized box and says, good to see you again, Jace. A little present. Uh, and then whether he opens it or not, um, she says, we should probably talk about all of our friends and family and the entire school getting demonetized because that's not going to go away. We need to do something about that. Now that I've cleared my head. Go on, yeah, open your present. I opened the present. What is it? It is a turquoise sash. <laughs> <laughs> Char, oh, yeah. I know you mean this in a good place. Oh, it's so good. So thank you. I you don't want it, I'll take it. 
sweet, you can take it. Look, <laughs> I I could. That's not that messed up all the feng shui. Even with this on, like it's that's just your style. That's your style. That's you. That's you. You are you. Just that's not me. But thank you though. I appreciate. It. I see. I see it. Thank you. Right, yeah, we're gonna I think uh, kick on the struggle then as you uh, realize. Wait, sure? what did you say about the monetize? We got another half hour of this. Um, <laughs> oh, I thought we're four thirty now. So no, I think I think yeah, Schmidt, I we could go another half yeah. hour. Oh, of, right, of I we're going part, to that. Yeah, shopping yeah. And, <laughs> and big sandwich, the role play <laughs> thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. big sandwich and having a good time. Uh, <laughs> apparently. Uh, Apparently, um, Char shoplifted a sash after they were. Uh, now, why would Char shoplift it? Oh yeah, if he had no more money. Right. Yep. Uh, oh crap! Yeah, yep. totally. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and you sort of realize and start checking things, and it, it, there's demonetization uh, notices being posted to MetaBook as you're speaking, and yeah, Char's parents have been lost their jobs and been demonetized. As have uh, Panda's parents. Um, Jace, your your dad's fine. He's probably uh, in part responsible for this. Um, and uh, however, uh, Derek, uh, you have been uh, essentially a uh, uh, the foster uh, uh, department program, whatever, has uh, revoked your placement with your foster parents, and you're going to be placed in an, in some sort of institution. Oh. Uh, so yeah, it looks like the oh, authorities. Oh, I think uh, I share that news. You. Yeah, that I that I I get that text, <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> so uh, Golden Boy said that he's got a plan, or we should make a plan, and I think we should make a plan because I'm not going to the little cozy time teen center that they try to name feel all warm and fuzzy. We know what happens there. It's basically prison. I'm not going. So, uh, uh... Before we roll into the last struggle, though, I do need a five-minute break. Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry to dum, dum, dum. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a high-tension moment. But here we go. You're all gonna have to wait just like we are. We'll be <laughs> back! <laughs> We're back. Yeah. Back going into the fifth and final struggle. We already know who's going to win the episode, but uh, as we've seen, uh, it can still, uh, st still doesn't mean you're winning the world. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so again, going in here with uh, three wins for the, um, uh, for the youthful offenders and one win for the authority. This will be the last one adding to the scoreboard. And uh, I think we still, Started with a friendship question and played through the scene already, so it's time to declare the hope and objective. So the objective of the authority is that the demonetization campaign will be an effective deterrent against further resistance and lending to support to, you know, uh, people who criticize and stand up to Kingu Corp. It just, you know, yeah, it becomes locally, uh, local culture, it becomes unpopular to resist Kingu Corp. I just feel it, defeated. I. <laughs> What's your hope? What would you like to have happen instead? Uh, to expose how unfair this is and and stop it from happening, um, or undo it. Click. This click, is the click, like Control Z. <laughs> this. Oh, go ahead, Shay. I know you had had something. No, no, no. Keep going, because I, I, I always have ideas. Keep keep talking. Uh, I was just saying that, like, I think this is get community outrage up. Like, I think everything we've done has been very, like, one-off, we do something, and it's time to get everyone else involved. And I have a tiny idea of how to do that. Okay. Uh, sounds like good hope to me. How you get it done, though, uh, that's perhaps what's going to happen throughout the struggle. So you work that into your standing up. Um, that said, anything else to add before we move in? 
think so. Okay, we declared the objective and the hope. Uh, it's my turn to start here as the authority. So, yeah, demonetizations are hitting you hard. Uh, a bunch of people are starting to unfriend you on MetaBook. Um, so they don't lose meta points in conjunction with that. And uh, yeah, it seems like uh, the authority has gotten everyone afraid of for what they're going to do if uh, you stand up against them. So I will, with that, uh, sort of more or less setting setting the mood rather than a, a direct assault on you for, for my first turn. But I will claim the number six. I'll stand up. All right, roll the this dice. This is your right. Oh, wait, one more thing about special sure rules. Yes. Okay, we got the round robin and violence is ugly. However, uh, the resistance token is in play, and it's I'm holding on to it, so I get to use it to force you to re-roll, but I have to give it to you if I do. And then there's the special rule of desperate circumstances for the scene only. This is a desperate battle, and you're going to have to put it all on the line if you hope to win. When the authority takes their turn, they claim two numbers, Unless the youthful offender that just stood up either used a sold-out conviction or their disorder. If a youthful offender stood up using their disorder or a sold-out conviction, the authority only claims one number. So keep that in mind when you declare which convictions you're using. Unless you, I don't think there are any sold-out ones, so uh, if you're... Your innocent convictions aren't going to carry you through so easily, so you'll have to lean into your... Uh, you'll either have to uh, just let that be what it's going to be or lean into your disorders to carry the day. It's up to you. Uh, okay. But, uh, there it is. Uh, now someone can stand up. I'm still standing. There I'm still standing. Sorry. Roll the dice. Yeah, yeah. Five. Uh... I am going to use cool. I'm going to use cool in this way. Cool. Here it is. All right, I'm going to look at all y'all and be like, okay, so we just need to, we need to give people hope about this, correct? We need people to rally, rally together. We need to show that resistance can be good and like maybe a little bit positive except for all the negative stuff I'm doing. To start that, we need to figure out a place. And to figure out stop. And to stop that, we need to figure out a place. And the place could be like, I don't know where the local place, the local gathering place. And basically Whatever I'm looking at whoever I say. Um the local the the local the mall. The mall. There's a big we are here. This is a big gathering place. Cool. And so I'm gonna look at I'm looking straight at uh Flash panda. Mom. Is like panda. <gasps> Panda, could you get, could you go on a uh, freaking book? Meta book. <laughs> Meta book. And create the biggest rebellious flash mob to happen. Ooh. I, are you suggesting we fight back with flash mobs? I suggest that we fight back with flash mobs. All right, so yeah, fighting back with flash mobs is pretty cool. Uh, you're able to organize that. Apparently, there's a bunch of people already hanging out here, and a lot of people already kind of upset or ready to do something. And the the flash mob uh, strikes a spark, and you, you've got something of a, a impromptu rally going on here at the food court. Uh, however, uh, the authorities have been apparently waiting for some sort of a uh, uh, resistance. <laughs> They've been uh, waiting for this flash mob. So uh, I, you didn't, you used a normal uh, innocent conviction, and that's just, you know, something I get to claim two numbers after instead of one. So, I don't uh, like that. Oh, that's uh, really uh, awful. It's an awful. So, okay, yeah, so unless, are... it's unless, just in terms of rules, I'm super not saying to do this, but that, that is unless Shay then stands, like, Shay says that he's going to sell out something. Or, Unless no. you use a conviction that has been sold out, or your conviction that is your disorder, your yeah. sort of a fatal flaw conviction. It's your last conviction. Yeah. So essentially, like going in with uh, sort of that bitterness and world weariness, and you're know, going farther with that sort of a, uh, um, you know, more desperate attitude uh, favors you in this case, whereas uh, using your more innocent convictions represents uh, maybe not having 
that sort of experience or guts to really yeah. uh, go as far as you need to. And uh, that kind of proves to be the case because there's a whole bunch of security guards here, like more than you thought, and drones pop out, and they just start f- fracking tasing your flash mob. Uh, before long, people are screaming and running or flopping on the ground like a fish having seizures. It's Which also it's, uh, looks like a flash mob. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's now a. Uh, it, no, it's definitely still a flash mob. <laughs> uh, and yeah, it just the authorities just immediately stamping down on this with 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 immediate force. And I'm claiming the numbers four and seven. I don't like that. I'll stand up. Take number eleven. All right. though. go ahead and roll the failing dice roll. I'm scared. <laughs> you should be. I'm super scared as well. Five. Oh. Oh, 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 wait, wait, wait a minute. I don't no. have to let that stand. Cliff, no. I think uh, you can be building up a little resistance against me, but uh, I'm using my oh. resistance. Is it the general apathy of people around? They just don't want to get involved. They don't want to get tased or stopped or beat up or demonetized. They just kind of stand back and let it happen to these poor flash mob people. So re-roll that dice roll. Roll a five again. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seven's yes. what I want. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the resistance token works in my favor. Uh, <laughs> and uh, you either have to take the loss or you're going to sell out. What's it going to be? It's going to be Panther. Are you about I, to I, taste the big hot sandwich of injustice? I, <laughs> We're done with the big punishment. <laughs> I look at Golden Boy and I see the bruises. And the last thing he said to me was um, that we need to get uh, information out there to fight back um, and, and stand together as a community. Um, via flash mob or or something else. Um, so I am gonna sell out smart. Ooh, what does that sell out to? Ooh. Sells out to pedantic. So now for all future episodes, as long as I have this sell out, I'm gonna say, well, actually, um... it's permanent. <laughs> It is permanent. Yeah, yes. it's gonna be insufferable. I know it. Uh, you, <laughs> so basically, instead of the the smart is Panda is super smart and knows a lot about all kinds of stuff. Smart sells out to pedantic. You feel the need to flaunt how bright you are and are always correcting people. So I am now gonna well actually everyone, um, but what I'm gonna do for for this is. Um, all of Kingu Corp's posts about how evil we are and and uh, violent and everything else, I'm gonna start um, responding and saying, well, actually, um, and like correcting all of the falsifications um, to actually show their intentions um, with this demonetization and how it's gonna impact the economy, how it impacts students and education how it affects further uh, the future of their workforce and everything else and how this is actually a detriment to them and the community um, and basically try to get those responses um, uh, in the algorithms to, to kind of go viral and once again show that uh, Kingu Corp clearly doesn't know how to manage a school um, in an effective way. So that's... All right. And it works the community rallies against it and uh and not all the demonetizations get rolled back uh most of them still stick uh well it depends on what i suppose what you choose with the uh ending here but uh but yeah you rally the community who sees this as injustice by kingu corp rather than uh them just uh letting you load on your own so uh as far as the reflection goes, instead of using the reflection questions, we decide on the answer to the episode together. So, will Kingu Corp have widespread local support for its actions, or will the community begin to oppose it? I think we've answered that question. 
opposed. Uh, you don't belong here. It felt bad. We mm -hmm. won, but it felt bad. So, yeah, as far as uh, scoring the episode, we have misspent youthful offenders with... I don't know why I had misspent on there. Uh, with three points, authority with one, and then there was one scene that was not scored. So it scored out of four. Three to one, obviously a win for the youthful offenders, so you get a good ending. You may choose one of the following options. Subversion, destroy a system of control or authority figure. Creation, choose or design a new exploit for the youthful offenders to use in future episodes. Or redemption, choose one youthful offender with a, one or more sold out convictions that returns to which, its original version. It can still be sold out again in the future. Uh, this is a new rule idea for me where... You can use a whole episode's progress just to have a redemption arc for what one of the youthful offenders. Otherwise, it is weirdly there's tempting no and I going hate back. it. <laughs> I think I I feel like it would be robbery to take it back this soon. Like yeah, absolutely. We gotta take down the school. Right? It also doesn't yeah. help you win. Yeah, Cliff. Maybe maybe you can't redeem something you sold out in that episode. That feels that feels weird. It, it doesn't does give you weird. well. Okay, so hold on. Thinking, thinking this through, you can, you can s return one thing that you sold out to a, right? Or, like, and the benefit of that is you can use it again, but you don't get to like get a boost to like create something. Um, what does destroying a system do? Like, kind of mechanically, if that's the word. Well, it makes it go away, but ultimately the authority figure has eight total systems of control, or the authority has eight total systems of control and authority figures. You have one exploit. You need to have more exploits than the total number of authority figures stuff, or the authority's stuff, authority figures and systems of control in order to win the series. So the only way you move that needle is either by getting a new exploit or taking down a system of control or authority figure. Is that even physically possible do, with five episodes? Uh, I don't think we're going to get to that clear of an ending, okay. but so I think we'll have to wrap it up based on how things seem to be going, or uh, no. yeah, we'll Maybe see. Maybe we could do a Patreon episode. Mm, keep it going. But, uh, to wrap yeah, it up. Maybe we could revisit the thing sometime else, or I, don't, yeah. I also like the idea of having it still be kind of open-ended, I don't think we're going to get through an entire series arc by playing through, but it, I think it's goal. worth working towards if you want. Because I can't <laughs> find season one. Let, let, leave people wanting more. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, the, using the redemption is ultimately sacrificing your progress, the progress of the revolution to Got it. Uh, to friend. bring back yeah. one of your friends' I and your convictions. Vote we it is mathematically school. always the worst option to take. Hmm. I, yeah, I think it's kind of like when they get close to losing all of it, like then save, help them save their soul. Yeah, um, if they're down to their last one, it's good to give them one more so they have a buffer. Otherwise, any time they roll the dice, it could be the end of the series. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I agree with Derica. I think the school is what we focused on this episode, and so that makes yeah. sense for us to ditch that. Like maybe they just they just decide that the school is just not worth the the cost of investment yeah. maybe it's like all of these things have been happening to students and like maybe all like the majority of the people in the mall were like students of the school and the public is just like uh we've got to do something because obviously the school is the problem yeah and the kingu corpse response it kind of goes along with it or spins it is like a well fine then if you don't like our new fancy school then we'll just close it down mm -hmm. Oh yeah, Which like we not... don't have school anymore. Yeah, right? like not having any school at all. You that would be a weird school, thing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, maybe maybe that's not how it works. So the, maybe the school is like uh, they kind of pull their resources, and it's just it's a struggling, struggling community trying to keep a school going with what resources they can uh, get, which is Meeting at not the pool. Much. Okay, so, so we still have to go to school. Okay. Maybe now there's so, overcrowding yeah. at some of the schools because, like, now they have instead of having like seventh and eighth grade, they have to have seventh, eighth, and ninth. Uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah, the the school definitely. Uh, is... <laughs> we will get through the semantics. We will. Figure but, it out. <laughs> but at least you don't have to buy your food in the cafeteria, uh, or maybe there just isn't any. I don't know. 
Uh, oh. You have to bring your own. <laughs> so, so. Yeah, no more school system of control. Uh, there is still school, yes, but it's just not a system of control anymore. Okay. I, um, I agree with all this, and I'm just going to say this because it's been in my head because it's a funny thing. We could have an explo exploit of a flash mob. We could have had that, but that's totally fine. I thought I'd be fun. I mean, they did just we... kind of get immediately tased. Yeah, so they, they they were got not the most stopped. impressive flash. Map. But that, that, but that, but that was just the first stop. That was just the first yep. step. I, I mean, I agree. I agree with everything. Yeah, we need to go to school. To turn this but... into step up revolution. So yes. <laughs> would, would you like to then rethink taking down a system of control and instead create an exploit of? Uh, martyr flash mobs. <laughs> no, 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 step up. Because no. <laughs> no. yeah, that was started as no. like ah oh, solidarity, it Friday. Oh, flash mob. It was like Black Friday. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, all right, all right. Okay, fair. All right, we will. We will. The big hot sandwich felt so bad that they're like now on our side or something. They they give lunches to the school. <laughs> oh now, yeah, now big we hot. have one choice of lunches, and it's just yeah. big, big hot sandwich. sandwiches. It's what just big free, sandwiches. but everybody gets but it's it. Free, <laughs> yes. <laughs> don't don't forget about the big hot fries. That's that's the best. Big sandwich, yeah. Amazing. Awesome. Is that what we're going for? Is that what we're going with? No, we're Wait. going. The system of control is is yeah, lost. Flavor, for flavor, okay. it's, yeah. flavor is Maybe next that we do yeah. have lunch in the school and <laughs> big sandwiches. Uh, ultimately, it's like like a special deal that uh, some some parents sort of pool their money together. Uh, there's a community re like fundraising thing, and yeah, big hot is essentially, or not big hot, big sandwich is involved and in, in helps with uh because they were right there when the whole flash mob got tased and stuff and. Literally even though they might, even though they're a Kangaroo Corp subsidiary, you know, there's still like a franchise, or I don't know how it works, but yeah, there's there's Big Sandwich. Yeah, maybe Big Sandwich is actually like one of the last fast food places that wasn't a Kangaroo Corp subsidiary. Actually, it's a it's a local Amazing. business, uh, and we'll we'll see how that goes. Uh, we've got to do something with Big Sandwich now. Yes, um, we have to. <laughs> Thank you, Shay, for that. So, yeah, there we go. That's an episode. And next time we'll play another episode and we have to make everything up. We'll have the scene structure and probably the same special rules will fall in with the different scenes. Uh, but um, it's pretty much open-ended for the next one. Uh, well, not open-ended because we have a lot, a lot of information and uh, we've got to know the characters quite a bit and a lot of a lot of background that we sort of lived and created together through the first episode so hopefully we'll feel ready for that awesome thank you for thank you this clip. cliff yeah, yeah oh, thank you yes. thanks so much for playing yeah and uh chat thank welcome. you so much for being here thanks to everybody who has uh donated to the kickstarter so far we're up to 5590 with 89 backers Sweet. So we're we're in a good place. Yeah, I don't uh, feel so good if we hit that goal before 24 hours is up. I know, yeah. right? definitely on track to do it. Keep it going. Uh, so thank you all. Please post and share uh, if you had fun. Uh, tell the tell tell your peoples why, and uh, and and get them to come uh, back the Kickstarter so that you can all play together. Um, and be youthful and, uh, together. Make sure you slam that like and subscribe button. Yeah, did I do, wrong did I do that right? Yeah, uh, but it's the wrong platform. <laughs> hey there, Twitch! Slam that like and subscribe button. Uh, kiss your mama, drink your milk, and and subscribe to Ram Alternus and watch all their cool stuff. Thank you. That's a commercial. Clip that. <laughs> That, um, we'll run it. <laughs> yeah, that's been clipped. Got you. Amazing. Well, thank you all so much, and we'll be back here next week for episode two at twelve thirty central. Um, so we'll see it. We'll see what happens to these youthful offenders next week. Thank you all so much for joining, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>